Oh, I'll do the intro. Friends, welcome back to another very special hobby stream. I'm joined today by the man himself, the quintessential Mr. QA. QA stands for quintessential Adrian. Adrian Phillips, to my right. Adrian, how's it going? Doing great. How about you, Zach? Well, you're like up real high. I know. That's how I always am. Well, you're like used to playing John and Brett this week, <laughs> and you're like... That's right. Uh, I just... I love... <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Uh... What are we doing today, Adrian? We are going to work on uh, something that's extremely essential to orc civilization, structures. <laughs> Any good civilization has buildings that you can live in, that you can build from, uh, from trash. We're going to be using not quite literal trash, but probably just the next level down. Super cheap, super quick, super easy. Next level it's down or next level up? Well, depends how you look at it. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually really excited for this. I have a lot of thoughts on what we're about to do today. Um, I, I've had an epiphany today while we were working yeah. uh, that I'm excited to talk about making orc terrain. Excited to make some orc terrain. Guys, let's get creative. All right, so here we're looking at some of the terrain that you might be familiar with from over on Tabletop Titans. This is our orc board um, that is kind of from my personal set. And um, it, it really arose from my desire to have a really cool big work board and uh, not really having any good resources to, to, to pull from. We have things like uh, Cromlick does terrain, but it's all expensive or too small or doesn't kind mm. of feel right. And so um, I love building kind of found terrain, found objects. And so uh, this is kind of what dro drove this. And uh, so it's all relatively cheap. Uh, it's pretty easy to make, so this is something you definitely want to stress for today. It's something that everyone can do, can follow along. We'll talk a lot about materials, how do you get these nice kind of rusty effects. Um, obviously here we have a lot of it kind of is to the scheme of my personal wa with the kind of oranges and the, and the teals. Um, but you can kind of take that as a cue of kind of places you can add a bit of your own style for your orcs, uh, mixing in with the kind of more gener generic kind of style. Um, so that's kind of the, the big shtick. I... You know, you said you love building found object terrain, and this is kind of where I was going with this. Yeah. I, I, I did very early on when I started making terrain, and obviously I love making terrain. Making terrain for me is something I started right away when mm -hmm. I started playing. I, start, I, I think I had painted up like a unit of Tau Pathfinders before I was like, hey, let's make some terrain. Um, so I love making terrain. I, I had a lot of early goes with found object sure. terrain. Um, I, I love that term, by the way. Did you? Did I hear you say that? Found object. Found object. Yeah, terrain. it's like found art. It's, it's right? an art. It's an art term, it, right? It yeah, is an art okay. term. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, love that, I love that term for train. Found object train. Um, <laughs> that was my my actual education was in art. Right. Not no, anything, I, so. I well, I had uh, I you know I, mine is in music, but right. we had to take like uh, art history classes yep, and stuff. Yep. So. Um, I, I love that term, found object terrain. There's also found object instruments, where people like oh, you know, yeah. make instruments <laughs> out. Uh, anyway, I, I had some early, not so good goes at it. Uh, they were okay, but as you guys know, I love throwing stuff away. So I have thrown so much of my stuff away. Yeah. I threw a bunch of terrain away the other day. Brett mm. and uh, Adrian were, were having a little bit, especially Brett, he always... He always <laughs> loses it um, when I'm about to throw right. terrain away. So, I, I uh, not a, not a big fan of it. However, mm -hmm. I, I I realized that I was going about the wrong way. I was trying mm -hmm. to make found object terrain for Imperials, yes. which of course is possible. Yeah, and I was also trying to make found object terrain for Tau. Oh my gosh, which is a little harder. That's so difficult to um, do. So orcs are <laughs> like. Perfect for it because yeah. that is how orcs make <laughs> exactly. where they live, right? This exactly. is found object <laughs> uh, architecture for the orcs. Right, it's, right. It's, it's, it's a perfect match. <laughs> the stuff you've done is amazing. Um, I mean, I walked in and saw your orc board a few months ago, and I was like, whoa, this looks great. Okay. And then there was cardboard, and I was like, ugh, I, I do not work with cardboard. Yeah, yeah. Not because it doesn't look great, but because I'm, I'm very skeptical of its mm -hmm. ability to hold up. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. this stuff is going to hold up well, and I'm calling it right now. I've said a lot of things that people who airbrush should do first, people who want to make terrain do first. I think this is it. Mm -hmm. The first mm -hmm. thing to get you going, you need some terrain, you need to get going on an airbrush, make orc terrain. Yeah, we yeah. kind of chat it through it. We think maybe the you could make a really... Uh, valid orc board, valid meaning good play. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of options. Maybe get a little more than you would normally do for like a city option, something oh, like yeah, that. Absolutely. For under two hundred dollars, and 
We think that includes a ninety or eighty dollar mat. Yeah. How yeah. much are the mats now? They're, they're like yeah, they're like seventy five to hundred dollars. Yeah, we think so. that includes the mat. Yeah. So absolutely. one mat, the stuff we're making today, mm -hmm. and our favorite, a bag of moss. That's right. Uh, you <laughs> saw in the video here that we were showing you, Adrian has like this brown moss. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think orcs would water anything. No, not particularly. <laughs> no. Yeah. And it was kind of a case where I really. To be honest, this 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 board also kind of was taking inspiration from what I had seen you do, and I kind of wanted to put that into use. Where I like had this, I had the mat first. Actually, I had won it in a, in a tournament, and I was like, I love this mat. I I want to make an orc board. Let me match that. Let me get the moss that works for it. Let me match all the terrain for it. Yeah. And then it kind of it was like, cool. We have that. Well, what else can I imagine? Kind of the orc terrain looking like. Yeah. Um, Looks amazing. Thank you. Pretty easy to do. Uh, we, in the time, like Adrian got here a couple hours before the show. Yeah. I was doing other stuff, setting up for other things. In the time he was here, we built two, like three buildings. We did. Very yeah. easily. And we weren't being a, that efficient no, about it. No, either. no, So, are you ready? Are we ready to get going? Ready I'm to super take us excited off? to get okay. going. Uh, yeah, so today what we're going to be looking at is really how to build a couple different things. We're going to be looking at how to build, first of all, these orc style huts, these orc huts, um, kind of bunkers. Now, these, uh, for the, um, if you guys haven't seen them on the channel, this is what they look like. And originally they were actually built, with, you know, we won't talk too much about gameplay, but they were built for as magic boxes. Mm. You need magic boxes, right, super right. hard to find, you can be inside of them. Um, but they still work in modern uh, terrain. You can you can make them breachable. You can make it so that you can stand on them. You can make them not breachable. We don't usually play inside of them, but they're just big blocky things that um, also are very modular. This is something that's super important to me. We have these these uh, kind of big base size uh, huts, and then we have these smaller mini ones that can sit on bottom. They can sit on the top. You can kind of restructure them, and I wanted it to be as modular as possible to then, of course, create that minimum five inch height for uh, obscuring terrain. Uh, so this is uh, one that has just been just been built, just been primed. You guys can see I need to prime a little better. Yeah, it's a little, well, funny, it's actually kind of good because why are they blue, Zach? Hmm. Oh yeah, well we'll talk about that. Here, I do want to show real quick, uh, great for hiding your infantry in Warhammer 40k. Great for hiding everyone. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. It's that easy. <laughs> it really is. And this is another reason why orc terrain can be really easy because it's it, it just, it doesn't look weird to kind of stack these things on top of each other. And they're not necessarily meant to be stacked in that way, but they, because of the same size, uh, it works. It just works. And you can stack them and make giant like orc skyscrapers, and, you know, the, the, the sky's the limit. And the reason that they're blue, uh, as I mentioned, is because these are actually from electrical boxes. You guys can see the base things uh, here. And so uh, they come completely this color. Uh, although I will say, I was at the store today picking up, so picking these up. They also are now making them out of fiberglass. <laughs> do not use the fiberglass ones for this. Fiberglass is very dangerous and sharp and can do nasty things. And it's also a much tougher material. This is like kind of tough, but pretty bendy, pretty mm -hmm. malleable plastic. So it's actually perfect for working with. Yeah, not. <laughs> <laughs> you would regret fiberglass very early. You would, yeah, exactly. So just wanted to put that caveat. So what we're going to do first today is we're going to talk about, we're going to walk through actually building one of these huts from scratch. And then uh, afterwards we're going to be building a, a second orc structure, kind of taking some of the things that we've learned and applying them uh, further. So uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and dive on yeah, in. Yeah, I'm going to do this along with Adrian, uh, ask some questions along the way. If you guys have any questions, uh, send them in. Of course, we're happy to answer them as we, as we work here today. Yeah. Ready? Well, let's do this okay, thing. Let's do it. So we're going to go ahead and take these boxes. Um, the ones that I had worked with previously, in fact, if you grab that one real quick. Yeah. These had, and I, by the way, I know nothing about electricity <laughs> <laughs> or electrical engineering, really. Uh, these ones have these kind of wings sticking out from the side with a, with a nail through them. And so these, this is what I had worked with originally. And so I just removed them. I went ahead and sawed these off with, uh, this is a classic kind of craft saw. Um, Zach and I were talking about this before. Yeah, basically <laughs> my, my view on this tool right here is that uh, I, it's a great tool for me to have. I love sure. having this tool. Yeah. I've had it probably for eight years. I think yeah. I used it once. Whenever I think I need to do a project, mm. and I was telling Adrian, I think I need a pr to do a project, I'm like, mm, yeah. I might need to use that hand saw. That hand saw is a reminder that this project's not going to happen. Right, right. It's, it's a great tool. Yeah. If you are using yeah. it, you are doing something awful. Yeah. It, it's, it sucks. Yeah. It's it sucks awful. to use. It's not that it's not good. 
No, it's just, yeah, it, it, it means you have something that needs to be cut on like a very long axis and it's probably awkward and yeah. it's probably decently durable. So it's kind of a pain. So with some elbow grease, I was able to saw these off, um, but we did that off camera so you guys don't have to see. Yeah. Nobody wants to see that. It's no. Just, anyway, so we've got this prepped and then now we have these these other ones, which I just found today, which are taller and a bit uh, slightly different. Um, you know, the first thing that actually drew me to these electrical boxes was um, discussing with, with my dad, kind of looking for found found uh, art, found object uh, terrain. Yeah. These ones, the most more so these ones. Yeah. Have you ever played the first Dawn of War? Tell me these. Tell me these are not Space Marine bunkers. Like one hundred percent. I I don't think I've played the first oh, one. I don't, don't play, play video. You don't games. play video games. Yeah. In chat, this is one hundred percent. Those the Space Marine bunkers. I'm like, this is amazing. But you know, what would be more amazing is making it into orc terrain because there's a lot of like. Nasty stuff that we had to kind of cut off. Yeah. They had to shave down. It would be a ton of work to make it look like a space marine uh, actual bunker. But with orcs, it's all part of it. We can cover it up. Yeah. It all works perfectly fine. Yeah. So anyway, kind of ranting. Yeah. But uh, let's go on. So we've gone ahead and uh, we have these boxes. And um, I need to remove these little flaps real quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew them. Um, if you pass me the Dremel, Adrian, real quick. Mine's got mm -hmm. like the little hole thing on the top oh, popped yeah, out. Totally. So I'm just going to... Like, we won't dremel much because it's a really annoying. Yeah. In fact, what's that you say? Let me actually mute myself. <laughs> Sounds good. So I'm just unscrewing these whatchamacallits. And we're just going to remove this. Yeah, normally dremeling, not awesome to do on the stream. <laughs> I think we should do a whole dremel stream. Just like, yeah, that would yeah. be really funny, actually. Exactly. And like, introduce more and more dremels as things <laughs> just gets louder. Like, anyways, Harmony. as I was saying, the thing that you really want to <laughs> take into consideration. Um, yeah, these are great. And these are actually like super durable. Like, you can go yes. and get a lot of different things at, um, at, at a hardware store or um, a craft store that mm -hmm. aren't really gonna like hold up for terrain long term. These are not like that. These are super durable. They're super durable. This yeah. is something that was important to me because as I said, this is kind of my main personal set of terrain. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to look good, but I also wanted it to be functional in game. And then third of all, I needed it to travel well. This all fits in one box and it, and it can take an absolute beating. So I've gone ahead and removed these. The next thing we need to do is when you buy a lot of found objects, but especially these things, you're gonna have these little price tags on them, the little, uh, little scanner, uh, little codes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're a pain to remove. But I wanna show you a really magical uh, little thing, which is uh, Glue Be Gone. And I discovered, discovered this from my mother-in-law who gave it to me as a Christmas present. And I didn't realize what a, um, a uh, boon was going to be for my hobbying. She gives me like tons of like different like crafting and hobbying tools, and I was like, "What is this weird stuff?" Basically, it's just used to get rid of kind of the, the gooey, weird kind of stuff that gets left behind by tags. And so, what Zach's going to do is going to go ahead and just apply it here. He's going to go ahead and go ahead and scrape it off, and it's going to remove any of that residue that's going to make it kind of hard for anything to actually just stick to them and adhere to them. Um, you want a screwdriver? There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Now. What I, what I will say about the, the glue gone, and well, I'm just gonna have to be really careful here while we're hobbying. Um, after you put the glue gone in, it is like a oily type substance. Um, we'll see what happens today, but you wanna make sure you wash it off. Yes. Um, so yes. here, here's my approach to using glue gone. Anytime you get something, you're gonna have to see how intensely put on it is, meaning how, how stuck is it to whatever you're trying to get off. And here's what I will say, I do know a thing or two about this. If you're in the US or Canada, um, because of, well, let's not go into it, but <laughs> the, the glue used to stick things is like never gonna come off, mm -hmm. it's insane. Mm -hmm. If you're buying European stuff, um, I think it's probably like an environmental thing and certainly an ease thing. Mm. Their labels like just come right off. Yeah, yeah. I've noticed, um, like like with wine bottles and stuff. Right. Um, so I've kind of, and I've noticed this with, with stuff uh, other than food. So <laughs> you may not need this. Europeans may be like looking at this and going like, oh, wow, my. never needed something, never had something glued on so intensely <laughs> that I needed a special, special chemical. Right. Right. to remove it. Here's my system for, for these. First I sprayed it, let it sit, you saw barely any time at all. Mm -hmm. Then um, I scraped it off with a, a flathead screwdriver. Um, you you know, people use razors. I, flathead, saw, yeah. you saw it worked pretty well. Intense. Then I put glue gone, uh, goo gone back on. <laughs> and then I just kind of rub it around with my finger a little bit and we're gonna, we would let it sit for a little while here. 
Um, and then, and by a little while, I, I really do mean like a couple seconds. Yeah. Not long at all. We're, it's going to come off right away. Um, one thing, you guys, um, I don't know how well you can see. We were kind of <laughs> observing how the spray glue gone gets everywhere. And I was like, Adrian's like, I've never used the spray one before. And I was like, oh, my God, I only use the spray one. I've never seen. It's like a crime scene. Like when, when <laughs> like, the everywhere. people, like, they put the, like, uh, black light on things. And they're like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, there's a blood pattern everywhere. And I was like. I was like, I, you know how I use mine? I go to the closet where we keep it. I pull it out. I hold whatever is in my hand. I yeah. spray it. There must be glue I'm gone sure all everywhere. over our hallway. It just looks like someone was murdered. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's just sprayed everywhere. So, I love it. Uh, anyway, that, that's it. it. It's not the worst. Um, here, here's yeah. what I also will say about yeah. glue gone. I've used it on a number of different things. Mm. Um, I, uh, I I make my own homemade limoncello. Oh, okay. Um, so frequently Wait. I'll get. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. You don't put it in the drink. Glue gone. Or goo gone. Goo -gone. I don't... I, uh, We've used like five names so far. It's fine. Goo gone. It's goo gone. I thought it was gooby gone, but goo apparently that's not what it's called. Gooby gone. It's goo gone. <laughs> uh, I, I do not use goo gone in my limoncello. Not no. recommended. But I use it to take the labels off of bottles. Oh, okay. Like nice bottles of, yeah. of liquor and stuff that I buy. Yeah. And then I put my own limoncello back in. Totally. This is how I know about the European versus American right. thing, right? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I was like, anytime I have a, something from France, I put it like in my, in my uh, or Italy, and I put it like in the sink. Yeah. Like I, I leave, I come back, and like the labels yeah. are floating on yeah. the top. If it's from the U.S., it's mm -hmm. like, Dry, right, right. <laughs> Still, <laughs> um, yeah. So exactly. you end up with a little bit of a mess. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I was starting to say is, uh, you, some of this stuff comes off better than others, yeah. even the nationality thing aside. Sure, yeah. Um, the words, this one, yeah. I was, I was really excited with how easy this one came off. Yeah, if, that pleases me. If you get something <laughs> similar to this. <laughs> Um, and are trying to make some train, and it's not coming off. And you're like, what did those guys do? It's not you. It's not us. Yeah. It's, it's the, the sticker. It's yeah. the sticker. Um, and then the last thing I'll say before before Adrian moves us forward here is yeah, yeah. after the, like this stuff is I, I I wouldn't trust primer on it. No. Um, I, I actually got here these uh, like Miracle Wipe heavy duty cleaning things that we have at the studio, Classic. and it's uh, like a I think it's alcohol based. I'm just gonna rub it down yeah, a little absolutely. bit. Yeah, and that's it. I'm into Not it. Not too bad. Sweet. So that's uh, that's there's a lot of prep. Well, there's there's prep that you're gonna have to do with these these objects wherever you find them. So it's just kind of an, a, a useful tool whether it's gonna be for this object for this thing or if it's getting something from like a thrift store or an antique store that has like a sticker on it. That's something I've encountered before. Stuff like that. So useful prep. This building, I'm pretty much happy with with where it is. I have these little kind of uh, stumps kind of sticking out, and they're mostly fine. I have four of them have little holes on the corners, and I don't love that. But we'll just fill that in with um, some some uh, bits and stuff later on and uh, make it look complete. So again, the idea is to do as little as, as necessary to this thing to transform it into something that's not completely, obviously, an electrical box. Yeah. So this, I actually, funny enough, I'm gonna go ahead and put this to the side because um, we are gonna just start working on the stuff to attach to it. And I want to introduce you to the first of our materials for today. And it is this corrugated cardboard. Um, and literally, it's just, it's just from a craft store. If you go into, like, in, you know, in the US, we have like Michaels, for example. Um, and they have like the paper section for like doing papery kind of crafts and um, um, uh, scratch books. Uh, scratch books? What's it called? Uh, 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 scrapbooking. Scrapbooking. Yeah, scrapbooks. And uh, so it's just there. It's it's mega cheap. This one is uh, no price on it, but they're like you know cents essentially. And uh, so it's cargated. So it looks like cargated metal, the kind of thing that you see in like on like really cheap kind of walls or at like an auto shop or whatever. So it's perfect for orcs. Um, and so it's a really cheap, great material. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut out a section. Um, do we have here? I'm going to pull out this little baby one right here. And I've done a couple things that are really important that I, I kind of learned when I was working on these things. One, you can see I'm actually overhanging it um, by, I don't know, half an inch or so. Uh, how many centimeters is that? Half an inch? 20, 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters? I don't know. Yeah, it's a certain amount, you can see. And this does two things. One is it gives it a, a cute little roof and makes it feel like more like a hut. But then the other thing is, for these big structures, again, these things have the same the same base, right? So if you don't have a uh, a roof on the bottom that actually hangs out, 
you're going to have these like awkward things hanging off. So this actually makes it so that they are completely flush and uh, and they're they're much more stackable. So a couple of reasons uh, behind doing that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut it, and we're going to do kind of a, a big swath just like this. But it's important to note this stuff it wants to roll and fold in one direction. Mm, okay, and that is so good to that's important because we don't really want we don't want saggy roofs. Nobody wants saggy roofs. And so if I put it on this way, um, it's actually going to go ahead and, and, and fall in one way or another, right? We have to kind of decide where we're actually going to want to we're going, going to want to like reinforce it, essentially. Now, the longest edge, we don't want to rely on having a bunch of stuff kind of, you know, along the sides to reinforce it. So we're going to make sure it goes this way. So we're going, uh, you know, perpendicular okay. to it. And uh, so I think these things are about, I'm just measuring it. Um, yeah, I'd say I was doing about four inches. So we're gonna do like a four inch across and we can just slice it all the way down to be honest. Now you kind of, you kind of have an approach here. Um, I'm looking at this one right here. Yeah. You kind of have an approach here that um, this is the main sort of material, but mm -hmm. also I noticed like this one doesn't go the whole way. Exactly. And that's kind of what you were saying about the saggy. Yep, and yeah. you can see here these corners. Yeah. I've added a bit of plastic. Like this is plastic card, so this is holding up. This I've added a bit, and this is going to help it be a little bit less saggy, right? Okay. Um, in fact, this guy, I'm realizing I totally did the other direction. But basically, you, it's pick, okay, you pick a side, yeah. and then you kind of reinforce it where you need to, right? So, which is funny, you actually, you're actually kind of doing what the works probably would. Yeah, yeah. You actually are like doing a little it's bit of architecture. Shackle. You gotta, you know, <laughs> break it uh, up. What's important, I think, I would point out. I, I'd want to point out is just to say that, like, we we actually don't want any of this. Correct. Visible. We want to hide all that yeah. that nastiness. So we're, while we're gonna cut a big chunk, we're gonna actually kind of break it up. Okay. We'll just have it to start with. So for these kinds of projects, I do recommend getting a, a metal ruler or a um, uh, what's the word? Hard edge. Straight edge. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we have the that straight edge that's like metal. pretty pretty strong. Yeah, those plastic rulers won't work because we're going to use a, a knife to to go ahead and cut it. Right, right. So again, it's very orky, so we can approximate it. But I'm going to go ahead and mark out, you know, four inches, like so, and you know we can be messy with this because we're just going to here you go. Oh, uh, we're just going to paint over it anyways, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to grab the T square. Ah, uh, yes. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up. Just where you guys can see it properly. <laughs> and even though they're orcs, they do have standards, and a lot of the metal that they're stealing from is going to be manufactured, right? And so we want to make sure we have a nice straight, straight line here. Um, and I'm just kind of following the edge of the ruler, cutting all the way down. And there we go. Perfection. Now we need... Uh, we're actually going to... We're building here for, we already have some built, as you guys saw. Yeah. But we're building here for three more, right? That's correct. This is true. Um, now, I'm, I'm uh, here's a this. question that I'm going to ask you, but then I'm going to try to answer myself. Please do. Could I use scissors to do this? So you can. Uh, you have to be careful because, again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get, we're trying to fool people to think that this is metal and not cardboard. And so you'll notice, like, this edge is pretty beat up. And the more beat up it is, the more it feels like cardboard. So ah, do try it. It okay. kind of depends on the scissors, to be honest. Okay, let's see. Um, and then I, I see exactly what you're talking about here. And on mine, some, some of the cardboard is a little beat up. I'm actually yeah. wondering. Yeah. Okay, so those are pretty good, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah. So just be wary. Like, do a test cut. As long as you're getting this nice, sharp edge, it's going to be totally fine. Right. Yeah, the sharp. I uh, totally. I totally see what you're you know talking saying? about. Yeah. yeah, you guys at home. Um, he, it's it's a really big point actually, and that's like the big thing about found object terrain, right? Is like, right. you want found object terrain. Um, this is why egg egg crates are not often a great idea, <laughs> right. because you kind of don't want found object terrain to be able to like for, for people to be able to look at it and go, oh, I know what that is. Exactly. Right. Um, and you know when you see when I saw Adrian's stuff for the first time, the the with the card game metal, mm. I, I don't think I thought it was actually card game metal, yeah. but I knew exactly what it was that was right. happening. Exactly. Right. You want to help with that suspension of, of disbelief as much as you possibly can. Yeah. So what we're gonna do here, obviously, we could cover this whole thing um, with this corrugated metal look, um, but, it, but we're not going to. As we mentioned, 
with the, uh, the, the kind of default ones, um, they don't cover the whole thing. This is orcs. We want to keep it interesting. So honestly, you just kind of cut a shape that you like. Okay. That's a kind of a subsection. Um, and I think I'm going to do kind of a two part one. Like so. I think you're right. You would want to make sure you had a good pair of scissors. Yeah, they have to be sharp, can't be too blunt. Um, awesome. So we can see we're at the start of the roof here. And uh, we want to start gluing it on. We're going to kind of construct this thing as we go. And you're kind of feeling it out, have some fun with it, you know, uh, all that good stuff. So notes on gluing. I've tried a few different glues. Um, right now, I'm just going to be kind of lazy for speed. I'm going to use just the, you know, classic uh, uh, super glue. Mm -hmm. um, I did use pretty much entirely hot glue on the originals, and it seems to work fine. But, it, but here's a word of warning Yeah, about super glue. Several Wait, super glue or hot glue? Hot glue, hot, hot glue, glue. Yeah, yeah. Is um, when it cools, like yeah, you were saying earlier, right? It's basically <laughs> yeah. just another chunk of plastic, essentially. Yeah. And so you really want, really, really want to have that tight seam. Like I'll be honest, I when I built this terrain, I was like, I really want to try to try to get this together quickly. I I, I want to try the hot glue because it is easy to use. Mm -hmm. But we'll see we'll see if it lasts. And yeah. It has so it, it does work. But when you apply it, make sure you're pressing it. Careful, it's going to be hot. And Hold it, hold it, hold it until it's completely cooled. Um, if you let go of that 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 pressure before it's completely cooled, that's where you get it's going to separate and it's going to immediately cool from the air, and then suddenly your your hot glue is actually just in the way of these two pieces and actually keeping. Yeah, apart. it's like it becomes so. like you're trying to do, like we we're saying you're trying to glue two pieces of plastic together. <laughs> yeah, and suddenly you have like uh, another piece, of plastic, piece of plastic in between <laughs> them, and one day you go to get it out, like wow, what I, I made and it a, just fall apart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm really I'm realizing now that that hole that popped out you're going to cover, so it doesn't even matter. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But yeah. you're good. You're good. Right. I I didn't realize. So these are actually slightly different. Oh no, yours. This one has it. Just didn't pop out. That's so weird. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so here we go. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, you know, super glue is expensive, so I'm just going to go ahead and apply it at the most important parts, kind of dabbing it here and here and here. And I love using uh, this Insta Set, uh, which basically instantly cures the, the glue when it's exposed to air. And it's really important for when I work because I, you know, I have other things I want to do. I want to build the train. I'm so excited. And this lets me just work really quickly. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and spray this cardboard like so. Going to line it up as, as well as I need to for orc terrain. We're going to press it in. And um, then we're just going to kind of feel it out. Feel where it's kind of a bit loose. And maybe just kind of fix that a bit with the seal. So definitely try kind of your own methods with the glue. It's kind of are you trying to prioritize being fast, being cheap, being whatever? Right. You know, durability. So, so that's kind of my thoughts on on glue for this project in particular. Now, here's a question for you. Yeah. Um, we are putting on the cardboard first. Mm. Could we have put the other stuff on first? We can like kind of do yeah. layers, right? We can kind of say yes. what's on top of you what. You can absolutely decide. Like, yeah. what's your base layer? Um, one of the reasons I'm glad you asked that because one of the reasons I have sort of defaulted to starting with this material because it's the cheapest. Um, it has sort of been my de facto covering the most amount of space uh, with also with texture. We'll find that yeah. the other material is completely bare, very plain, so it relies right. on your painting. Whereas this, like, once we get it metaled and, and weathered up, like, it just looks it's, fine. It's going to take, take basic techniques, exactly. especially dry brushing, right? Oh, it's and recess it. washing very, very easily. Absolutely. So, so that's kind of the only kind of thing to consider. You ever turn it upside down to help it set? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, wait, well, we also don't want to crush... Too oh, much. that's true. Right. Not for this one. Yeah. We don't do that so one. So I'm not going to, I'm going to set it upside down, but I'm not going to like <laughs> yeah, yeah. press. Totally. I, I almost did. And then I was like, oh, wait, this, <laughs> just is, this will it. just crush everything. <laughs> All uh, right. So while that's setting, we can actually talk about the second material we're going to introduce, which is uh, plastic art. Um, we actually haven't really done plastic art on uh, the hobby string so far. So I'm really excited. Not, not exactly. Not, right. not yeah. this kind. I love plastic art. Um, and basically, it's literally just plastic. Often comes in this completely white material. Often comes in sheets. I do have some other ones just to kind of show you guys here. Um, and these are basically just uh, tubes, rods. This is where you can make like pistons and orc stuff and all that cool kind of thing. Yeah. And um, people make like entire models out of this. It's absolutely yes. insane. It's yeah. so cool. A note on where you to get it. Um, Thank I, you, actually, because I don't even know where to get yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is from Evergreen. The, the the brand is. I think you might have an inkling. This is yeah. Evergreen Scale Models. 
Um, that's the brand that I like. Okay. Now you can get it at a game store. Uh, Gale Force Line does sell them for like a 300% right. markup. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> they get very expensive. Um, I get them all mine from train stores. Train stores usually okay, keep this in yeah. stock with a whole bunch of it, just sheets and sheets of it. It's not the cheapest, uh, but it's also not the most expensive. <laughs> yeah, it's cheaper than a GW kit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, that's exactly. For sure. So I've just bought. Um, we don't. These tubes are. I just. I, these are for other projects. I want to show you guys. And I've got some sheets. These ones are fairly thick. And uh, this is like the secret to a lot of my orchid bashes. Like, oh, you need a plate that's like perfectly set up to kind of fill in like the back seat of this bike or uh, like a pedal. Got some plastic card. Cut it up. Yep. And it glues perfectly easy with this kind of stuff. Yep. So, anyways, rant done. <laughs> um, we have two thickness. We want the thinner one. Looks like I think you have the thinner one. Yeah, we got to go by sound. This is the sound. You gotta do the washboard sound. Not the washboard sound, the like, uh. Ooh. Oh man, that was so much better. We should start a band. <laughs> well, I, uh, I should. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I had a good instrument, I could. Look, I have a master's in music, and I, you know, I'm in, I have wow. a bunch of student loans, and that's what uh, that's why. <laughs> right there. Why don't you go start your own bluegrass band then? <laughs> All right, so uh, we're gonna do kind of the same thing. Generally, I will do smaller plates with this because of the riveting process, which we'll talk about in a bit. And um, not gonna do a rift, uh, r uh, rivet pun. Let's just uh, cut these things. Rivet puns. Yeah, it's gonna be riveting. Oh. We're gonna go ahead and slice. There's only really backwards. one rivet pun, huh? Oh, oh. Don't challenge me. I know. Or like super reedy if he's around. So it looks like, get, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but it looks like we're kind of just measuring out. Are we being like specific about how much we measure? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> I kind of just cut a section. <clears throat> One thing to keep in mind, um, you can see here, I do have this area at a minimum to kind of finish. And so I have this material. Uh, this obviously has to be thick enough to actually co cover this and actually kind of get a get a grip here to be strong enough. So I've kind of cut the minimum with kind of just eyeballing it here, but that's the only real consideration. Um, we actually have uh, underneath our paper, we actually have those like s those healing mats. Those, <laughs> yeah, uh, you can actually kind of see it coming it's up coming where through. Adrian has been working. <laughs> uh, so heads up, obviously. Don't cut um, on your kitchen table. Yeah. You guys knew that already, right? Um. Yeah. I'm sure they did. I mean, I'm asking them, I, I hope. I have faith in them. Yeah. We just ruined someone's table. <laughs> They're like, I was following along. <laughs> All right, so again, we're just gonna kind of piece by piece, very orc style, we're gonna go ahead and just glue these on whatever way feels cool. We can absolutely glue this onto the corrugated metal. This is where you can squish it. Because right now, if you glue it, it's only gonna glue to the tippy top and not hold it. So if I wanted to glue here, I'm actually just gonna completely crimp this down so we can get a better seal onto that. Like so, so I'm gonna oh, it. Oh, got it, okay. And then do that. Interesting, yeah. okay. Little technique. Interesting, okay. And this, this stuff will seal, this is where you actually do wanna use the super glue, if you can, uh, because this is now attaching plastic to plastic, and so it's gonna have a really, really nice seal. Now, um, is this also an opportunity, I mean, I was about to start doing this, to like cut little shapes in or out? Absolutely, of, absolutely. Of the plastic cards? This is what's amazing about plastic cards. It's a soft plastic. You can just cut these little, uh, just damage. You can do battle damage, you Yeah. Know? So, highly encourage you to. They almost like, you almost only need to like slightly perforate it and you can just fold it and off. you can just go along it, exactly. Yeah. One thing I want to note also is, you noticed, I didn't just cut a rectangle here. Um, other than these like this like battle damage and this weathering, I also cut a lot of the corners. We kind of just cut cut this off, and what this does is uh, it just makes it much more interesting. Um, so you can see there's no 90 degree angles, there's no sharp sharp corners, and it's just a much more interesting, compelling shape. It also makes it a little bit whimsical, which is something I look for in my orc train, um, and so highly recommend that. Even if even if it's just a teeny tiny bit, like if you guys you guys play video games. I encourage you to look at the environment and look at things that you would think have sharp edges and see actually how sharp of an edge they are. Often they'll, they'll round them, they'll add a bit of texture in, in this way, and it just makes it much more visually interesting. Now, quick question, Adrian, I'm gonna show mine here. Is Please it okay do. if I try to like wedge this in underneath a little bit? Like yeah, that? absolutely, okay? let's All do right. it. Get crumping. Nice, very, uh, this is nice, I like this, it's very easy. It's just fun, you know? Builds like, you know, people have like these, uh, like I hate, I don't, well, I shouldn't say hate, I, I, I can't do That's a okay. lot of assembly of models. 
Um, I mean, I can. I have to. I do it all the time. But I, kinda, <laughs> I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I kind of don't love. I love it. Uh, but, like, build and train, I think, is, like, where I actually like to do assembly, mm. you know? Yeah. You kind of get in here and you get to be a little creative. Exactly. That's the thing, right? It's yeah. not like, it's not just done by the numbers. Yeah. Even in like regular kits, like you have those decisions kind of all along the way, which makes it more more interesting. Um, I have this kind of awkward shape to figure out. I want to cover it. So you're saying here now is where I want to like, I want to press this down. Exactly. If it's going to be yeah, I get that good connection. Okay. okay. Awesome. All right, I'm going to do this at a bit of an angle. We just want imperfections. This is what makes it look not just orky, but just kind of like a real place that is lived in and made by something. Psychos? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I actually don't know who this is made by, but... <laughs> Psychotic orcs? <laughs> yeah. Well, it could have been... I was like, made by, made by like living things, but they totally could have been made by servitors, taken over by the orcs. So, I don't know. And made made even even more of a mess. Right. <laughs> I feel like this is something we talk a lot about with our terrain, uh, which is the concept of where is the terrain? Where does this thing exist? What is the history? What's the environment? Right, right. And so, as we mentioned, this this is orc terrain, but more specifically, really, this is imperial orc terrain. Um, and now, Me I, meaning, meaning what? Meaning we're kind of taking this. We can take the base like architecture as an inspiration. And work from there. Um, like the orc, ver it's the orc is like the meme version of the thing, right? And this is the that, the version of, of this. You could do like a tile settlement in the same style, which would be much harder, right. obviously, but um, could absolutely be done. Yeah. And so we're thinking about these are human materials that have been taken over. Now uh, you can also uh, <coughs> go ahead and just get more cardboard if you like. So for example. I have a bunch of this that's kind of, I have this awkward connection, uh, yeah. and I kind of want to overlay it with some more cardboard. Yeah. That's going to actually, and, and the cardboard, I, I don't want to do it like this. That's boring. That's, that's so, so samey. I'm going to make sure we're actually going perpendicular, breaking it up, um, and actually we're going to use a little smaller piece. Here. Yeah. Now we do have one more material, right? We that, do. That we're going to use a little bit. Can we talk about that? I'm super excited. Because I, I want to, I want to, I want to put some of that. On. <laughs> yes, yes. So you can definitely shake it up. This is a material that uh, we've used on the stream before, and uh, this you can also find at hobby stores, I believe. Yeah. Um, we, we, Bridger and I used this when we did our non-scatter scatter. Exactly. It ends up looking like metal grating. And I got this in the U.S. at, at Michael's. Yep, exactly. Uh, it's a knitting thing, isn't it's, it? It's uh, like for, for an embro embroidery. Yeah, embroidery. It's called a um, plastic canvas or an embroidery canvas. It's so perfect. It's also yeah. good for like doing like grading on like bases and stuff like that. I see yeah. some really cool bases done with that. So this is another easy material to work with. You can just cut it with scissors or uh, with X-Acto knife if you want to be very precise. And we're just gonna we're gonna cut it off. We're gonna attach it. Um, the weird thing with that one, mm -hmm. which. Um, which you can kind of see on the other terrain, is um, it's completely, uh, there's holes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's, it can be a little challenging to get yeah. to stick with glue. Absolutely. Is actually what, I think what you're getting at. That's, we, what I, that's what I'm getting at. And this is another case where if you are working with hot glue, I would recommend using just a little bit of super glue because it's going gonna, it's gonna to work much better and it's also going to lay flat. The super yeah. glue, or the hot glue, is just going to like, it's going to look like it's sticking in play. -Doh, yeah, you know? don't, glue gun on this is not. <laughs> don't glue gun that yeah. one. <laughs> Um, and then the other thing I would just say about this that I found, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll go top down here on mine. If you want to use this, and like, Adrian's completely correct about uh, how it fits in. Like, these uh, actually have some areas where you could kind of get it to work for you a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I might go here. Oh, yeah. And the idea being that it's sitting, it's flush, and I can also then glue kind of the bottom a little bit. Um, but if you can get it to, like, if you just take this and you put it here like that, I think there's a high likelihood it's going to come off yeah. before anything else does. Exactly. Um, so, like, crushed in like that, something, something, something like that. And um, <clears throat> there are peeps in in chat talking about some other options like drywall tape. Uh, absolutely. Like uh -huh, you guys uh -huh. can find. There's lots of stuff. Um, boy. I, uh, so what I did on the original one was little pieces of wood. Oh right, there there is, and that yeah. looks amazing. That's like little hobby balsa wood. They're right? literally yeah, it's, it's child's balsa wood from Michaels, and yeah. it's so much cheaper because they're like, oh, it's for kids. Like they don't have to be high quality. You're like okay, yeah. it's weird. But anyways, um, so it you know it comes with like a pack of a hundred for like five bucks, 
and uh, it's great. It would be weird to have the whole thing made out of that because orcs probably aren't using wood entirely, but like breaking it up, giving you some more texture, so, so, so good. Yeah, um, I, I imagine orcs just kind of like burn through all their wood like very, very quickly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and if, if you like are an orc and you like build some wood on your shack, yeah, I'm imagining it's like you wake up in the morning and it's gone. It's all stolen. It's like, it's like gone and your neighbors are like, Cooking or whatever. I do, do orcs cook? Um, I don't know, actually. Probably. <laughs> cook squigs. Cook with squigs. Probably both. Probably both. Yeah. So I'm going to add a bit more texture. And in a bit, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the walls around this thing. Because this is all still very plain. And this doesn't require as much material as the, the top, the roof. Because we're literally creating the roof from scratch. Um, whereas the sides have like nice architecture, you can use some of these like divots to your advantage. Um, but let me let me show you some of the ones we already have here. So for example, here is just again a big old slab. Yeah, I'll do the shoulder zoom yeah, here. Let's get a bit closer. Yeah. 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 So we've got some just a big old slab of that corrugated metal there. Um, one in the middle here, and uh, you'll notice a step that we're going to do very shortly, which is adding these teeny tiny little rivets, and the rivets really help bring it together and make it feel like it's. It's an actual thing, so you can see the rivets on top there. Uh, let me grab some of these other ones so you guys can see. And uh, this is another little one. I'm kind of mad, like, in my head, I don't know why I'm just thinking of these as, like, the grot huts. Oh, yeah. Um, where there's, like, no space. And this is actually, I have several layers of this, is, like, the grating, and then I did some plastic card on top of that. Um, and it kind of makes it feel like you got these little, little viewer port windows. So that's uh, that's the name of the game. Yeah, I, I'm kind of looking at how you uh, in in, the, in this one here. I'll mm. pass this here. Yes, exactly. You actually uh, do curve the metal around, yeah. and that looks so good. Thank you, thank you. Um, this is where the that paper is really really great because you can just wrap it around, hide those corners. Again, we're trying to hide a lot of this this uh, electrical box, right? Um, we're just kind of using it as a really sturdy base. Now the nice thing, kind of like we said, it is mm -hmm. true that. Uh, found object terrain when it is <laughs> Don't clear, laugh it. when we can tell what it is. <laughs> yeah, um, it's sort of like <laughs> like that's yeah. sort of also the nice thing about the electrical box. Like, not a lot of people know <laughs> what this is. Now, yeah. I know that, that you guys are gonna say, "Oh, I, I know what those are. I've seen those." Or like, if you've ever torn torn yeah. out a drywall and you see these inside. Mm -hmm. But it's like, real. it's not something like an egg <laughs> crate that we're seeing no. often, right? Yeah. And we know so. I do like that about it. Um, I think the first time I saw some of your buildings, I didn't even know what they were. And yeah. I've gone in, we've all gone into like a home a home improvement store and like gone to the PVC collection where yeah. there's like pipes and yep, stuff. Because yep, yep. you can do some cool stuff with those, but they always still do kind of look like pipes. Exactly. And yeah, if you get some GW bits and you stick them on them, stick them around, you can do some cool stuff. Right. But these like are very alien to, to me, to most people, like, like you were saying, they're we don't just, work in. Yeah. Uh, you know, electrical uh, <laughs> uh, electronics. Or, yeah, uh, you know, electrical electric, engineering. Right. There's uh, such, and the other thing is, which is kind of related to the PVC piping, like they're to scale. That's the wildest thing to me is like the PVC stuff, it's like it's cool, but it's often like massive, like they're huge, 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 and just a little, a little too big for the scale. But this is like, yes, like this is the size of a small building. And, you know, the size, you can imagine the size of the door and everything. And I'm just like, yeah, it just kind of works. So, again, there is also a thing about, like, you can know what it is, but it's done well enough and differently enough that you're kind of, the suspension of disbelief is big enough, you know? Exactly, um, exactly. I, I, I think that's it, right? Like, sure, um, some people will pick this up and, and say, like, pretty early on, like, oh, is this, you made this with an electrical box or whatever? Yeah. Um, but I, I think, think again, we're in, a, we're in, like, a level of, uh, yeah, dis. dis I don't know. What, what did you say? Dis uh, suspension of disbelief. Suspension of disbelief. So it's like, it's I know it's an electrical box. You know it's an electrical box. But like, <laughs> it looks different enough that we're like, yeah, that's awesome. That's a great orc hut, you know? Like, I'm not an idiot. I know what, what an electrical box is like. You know, I know it's not actually an orc hut. But we're kind of helping each other to get, like, get into this thing, you know? Guys, I know that's not actually an orc hut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is not a pipe, right? Yeah, this is not actually an orc hut. <laughs> I know. I just, you know what one of my pet peeves is? Like, you know what the worst thing is when you're, I don't know, uh, Halloween, for example. What are you supposed to be? Okay. That's not the right question, mister. <laughs> when somebody like, asks it's like, you it's like oh, like, who are you? What are you? It's not what are you supposed to be. It's like they're implying that you have failed. 
Uh, like, yeah. What were you immediate, trying to look like? Immediate implication of failure. Exactly. And, and most of the time when people say that to someone, they don't mean it that way. But that's 100% how it comes off. And it's just like, it's the same idea. Like, oh, yes, I know you're not actually Spider-Man. <laughs> but, like, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? It's this weird, like, we all have to kind of... I know you're not <laughs> actually Spider-Man. <laughs> it just drives me, like, those kinds of people just drive me crazy. Or it's just like, you just have no, no joy in your life, huh? No joy in yeah. their life. I agree. <laughs> Anyways. I'm going to read a super chat. Yeah, uh, let's do it. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you, uh, Nerdotronic. Nerdotronic, I glanced up at your super chat. I pretty much love it. Here we go, Adrian. You're going to hate this. Oh, God. It says, third edition book states, all orcs are unified by an, ins an instinctual contempt for the trappings of civilization. <laughs> Page 228, call me the pot grot. Mm. So he, he's talking yeah. AOS. When he uses orcs? Oh, yeah, this is Orux. Orux? Right, but right. I, I don't know. Like, does that count in 40K? Okay. No, this is good. This is good. <clears throat> I'll, tell you, I'll say two things. One, um, they have content for the trappings of civilization. Okay. Like, there's civilization, and then there's, like, all the nonsense around it. Like, the bureaucracy and the other stuff, and the, you know, the stuff that, like, isn't essential. Okay. So they don't like that stuff. Okay. That's my first point. My second point is, it's kind of like, so counterculture is defined by culture, right? I know you're saying civilization, not culture, but it's like, oh, like, I'm a hipster. I don't want to, everyone's uh, wearing tight pants. So I'm going to wear loose pants. I'm like, okay, but your actions are still defined by the society that you live in. Yeah, like, You're okay. still like the inversion of it. And so even if the orcs are hipsters about civilization, like, they still have a civilization. Uh huh. I don't know like, they want to. Are the orcs hipsters about anything? I think they're they are literally hipsters. They're like they don't want to waste time with guns. They don't want to like they know these things exist and they begrudgingly admit that they work. Mm -hmm. um, but they just don't like them. You Interesting. Know? Okay. So a bunch a bunch of hipsters. So are hipsters part of civilization? Yeah. You know it's funny. I wanted to actually. We, sometimes we do polls and we do like little informative <laughs> chunks. Of of uh, <laughs> just for fun on yeah. the stream, and I actually thought I was like, oh, you know, we should finally just like <laughs> no. just do the poll. We know it's coming. We should just do the poll while we're do dealing with orc stuff. Like, are orcs a civilization or are they not a civilization? <laughs> you know what? I think we'll just never know. <laughs> but, yeah, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> Sorry, I'm falling behind. This one actually is harder to do the wraparound because it has like this lip on each of these corners. This stupid lip. My, mine yours has it too, yeah. Yeah, Whereas there's these, there's, there's these a corner ones? where it doesn't. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to like take a smaller strip and wrap it around. Yeah. Um. So hey, it's, but, it's but a weird I was, thing. I, didn't I was expect. noticing that as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Nerdtronic, for that. Thanks, so Nerdtronic. Much. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you know, I don't know. I think like it's it, maybe it's a question that doesn't need to be answered. And of course, we're trying to answer something weird too, like. Which is what is a what is a civilization? Yeah, that's not that even, we actually don't know. That's not really even that easy to answer, <laughs> no. right? Um, Philosophers have asked this question for ages. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to wrap around. Yeah. Here. Oh, I like that a lot. But that also feels very structural, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to do like something like that. I might put a great thing here or something as well underneath first. I am super into it. Um, now let's talk about. Uh, we're, we're making a couple of these. We have a few already ready to go as well. Let's talk a, about a couple things, Adrian. One, one of the ideas that um, I kind of approached you uh, uh, with about, I, I said, like, hey, we can add to your existing orc board. Oh, yeah. And the reason that that's compelling is because if we add to his existing orc board, we get the ability to really make, like, um, Really make like like a city like mm -hmm. like you you, ha you have Careful. so much stuff <laughs> right I know like, oh. <laughs> Careful there. Uh, like like just like a big orc yeah civilization you know, civilization you know really fine like whatever I agree it's that's what it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> in this particular case right okay. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we could do that <clears throat> and then I okay. said the other thing kind of that we want to start doing here I want to start doing yeah. for the studio is doing more kind of setting up more situations where we have almost like what I would kind of call like bumper terrain sets and what right. I mean by this is we take some of the wilderness that we've made. So we just got finished with the taiga, which is the board that has like the pine trees and stuff. And we already kind of showed you guys how we, Brett and I made it so that it could be Petch, which is the crude homeworld. Mm -hmm. And we add a couple things to make that happen. One of the things I like to think about is 
what can we add to this, uh, any wilderness board, right? What can we add to it so that it is um, like a small amount of terrain that we can toss onto any wilderness setting, right? right? So exactly. the trees are there, the rocks are there, the hoodoos or whatever mm -hmm. it is are already there. Ooh. And we say, hey, like, instead of this being, you know, you know, maybe maybe Zach or maybe whoever designed it with one particular thing in mind, like, yes, there is an imperial outpost. Yes, there is a Tau outpost that goes there. What if we pull that stuff up and we can say, let's add, you know, some orc buildings mm -hmm. now. Like, the, again, the wilderness right. stuff is still there, so you're not, you're not losing all of your terrain. Right. Um, and I think this is something I would encourage a lot of people to do because... Yeah. You build wilderness at home. You build your wilderness setting. You get your trees, your hoodoos, your your rocks, your outcroppings, whatever, whatever it is you want. Mm -hmm. You then say, okay, like for my first board, I'm going to add some GW Imperial kits, right? Then later on, you say, hey, you know what? Uh, I actually, I, to change this board up, I might just add like a small box. I always tell people, get the box you want to store it in first. Right. <laughs> it's like, what can I, what can I fit in here? Like maybe I can fit a small orc. Uh, mech center, right, yeah. whatever they call it, um, <laughs> a small kind of orc mech area. <laughs> and with that small more, uh, uh, orc mech area, I have like this whole new way of using my board now, yeah. right? See, I love that. Um, so yeah, so, certainly something that I, I think we're going to be doing here. Now, the solution that Adrian and I kind of came up with, we said, let's make this to match your board. So when we paint this here today, we're actually going to paint it to match his board. Yeah. Or at least my my clan, right? Your clan, your clan, um, right? And and because that's the catch, we're we're gonna not weather it the same way you weathered it. Exactly. And the reason we're gonna do it is we kind of get the best of both worlds here by not weathering it. Um, his other stuff is weathered, but it's actually not weathered super heavily. No, right? yeah. no, it's not. So yeah. it'll fit in, and we can we can make that orc that big orc city we yes. want to make. Or we can take this stuff and put it on an ice board, yeah. or put it on a grass board and put some trees around it, exactly. right? Like, it or makes us so much more play with it. Yeah, you know? we can. You, it gives us more play with our boards that exist. It also means that every time we want to do an orc, like, an orc kind of field, we don't have to always be like on that kind of deserty board. Exactly. It's really exciting, actually. We play three games a week here, yeah. and we only set terrain up once a week. So yeah. it's nice to, you know, the the towel board. Uh, that uh, um, the the white towel board with all the micro arts stuff we have. Right. Um, people respond positively to that board. They really like it a lot, which I'm always super uh, humble and grateful for. Mm. I'm only saying that right now. I'm only saying like, oh, people like it because I want to point out that it is actually kind of weird sometimes for us to think about using it because we're like, <laughs> yeah. well, we've got to get towel at least this once week? this week, yeah. <laughs> which isn't hard to do. Um, yeah. Especially, you know, even what, even without Brian around, because Brett and I both love Tau. You're crazy. So it's it's not hard to do. It's not hard to get a Tau game in around here. But it is an additional kind of constraint. It's right? an additional constraint, right? Yeah. And right now, when they're like, you know, kind of a back burner codex, it's like, mm, yeah, <laughs> I, you know. I like that too. So some people will be into it because they just love Tau. But as far as wanting to see like what new cool factions are up to, right? You know, it's hard to compete there. It's it's yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that was always the problem with the theme boards. You know, we have a Necron board we, we don't see often. And it's, it's the usual stuff. It's like, yeah. So, so being able to make a board a certain faction at any moment is, is really exciting. Um, and so, yeah, we'll be painting these in the kind of style of my orc civilization. <laughs> like the blue and the orange and, and the checkers, uh, but then the weathering will be sort of agnostic. We'll see. We'll still have a kind of weathering that you might see in any sort of orc terrain, which is going to be like the rust and the scratches and all that 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 good stuff. Um, but we're not going to have like the red kind of dirt and, and wash and everything. Yeah. Um, which is going to be cool. Yeah, and so I'm excited. Um, of course, we did just use your orc board. We did. So we'll have to. Uh... <laughs> Wait, maybe a little bit, but yeah. um, we can always just bring it out for one game or whatever. Exactly, exactly. Um, one of the things I was seeing that you did on um, this wall, which we'll talk about, I guess, in a second, right? Absolutely. Um, so maybe I'll wait. No, I'm going to bring it up. We can talk forget. about it. Yeah, one of the things that I'm going to try to do somewhere on one of mine, I'm going to top down here on, on what I'm up to, or what I'm holding that Adrian did. He did these like little jaggy things, mm. jagged. 
And oh my gosh, these are all over orcs everywhere. Yeah, you got and these are, teeth on everything. But it's funny because they're also like, um, you know, I just put my Beast Claw Raiders together and painted them. Yeah, yeah. They're all over that oh, too. They're all over like in AOS, they're all over like anything that is <laughs> destruction based. Right, like, right. Just like, let's cut out a sharp piece of metal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Make it scary. Make yeah. it a jaw. So I definitely want to do a few of those on, on mine. Absolutely. Here. That sounds great. Um, this one's looking more and more together. I realized I also didn't do anything for that other hut. <laughs> Should we? Maybe we'll just move on with these. We yeah, can, that's we probably can do good that idea. one. Yeah. <laughs> I got so stuck in with mine. Um, yeah, so I've got a bunch of like the meshes you can see here, guys, on the windows, which I'm, I've now decided are windows let's again. See, let's do a shoulder look here. There oh, we go. That's good. <laughs> here we go. Um, so just kind of a cover, covering a mesh here, doing a couple smaller ones. I want to add like not window frames, but something that helps kind of uh, identify those as windows. And then very shortly, I think we're gonna be ready to go on to the riveting process. Yeah. Of rivets. That um, doesn't really count as a different pun, does it? No. Like I said, I think there's just one rivet. Pun. <laughs> um, the soups here. Soups. Yeah, I know. I uh, I don't know if he's here or not. Uh, actually, um, which is. Speaking actually brings which, up yeah we should we should bring this up we did uh, collect some fan uh, stuff again this week some some awesome fan projects I'm excited <coughs> excuse me that we wanted to look through uh, so let's do that now before we do a couple things yep uh, I'll say so we're we're gonna pull it up we we now have an official name for the segment <laughs> that we're gonna get to here it's in a second official, yeah uh, so we're we're gonna show that now the very first uh, fan thing that's about to pop up. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually did want it to be the first one. I wanted to include it, but I, then I, we realized before the show that's the first one that pops up. We're going to table it for a second and come back to oh. it. Um, so we're not going to address it. It's going to be really weird. Instead, we'll just talk about the name of our, of our new segment. Uh, also, well, yeah, let's... Does let's, that work for your students? You're like, guys, you're going to see a thing. It's going to be shocking. You're going to see... Sh <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know what? It actually works well for high school students. They, they're like into that kind of stuff. But like, <laughs> and all they're talking about. Honestly, I have not taught, uh, I haven't taught anyone younger than, than I, I want to say ninth grade. Oh, okay. Yeah. In, most, in a few not years. Most of my but I, yeah, I've taught a lot of elementary school. <laughs> so they would not, they would have none of that. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Yeah, no, elementary school is rough. <laughs> they're um, a bunch of. Kindergarten is super rough. I, I, when I've subbed kindergarten, like this was years ago. So that that's rough. Like <laughs> people ask you things, well, especially like, subbing it too. To be honest, right? Like like I was I was that was like ten years ago. So it's probably like your yeah. age, right? Um, yeah, maybe I was in that class. Yeah, <laughs> ten years ago when you were eighteen. <laughs> uh, like you're when, when you're teaching uh, when you're subbing. Lots of times, like high school, I subbed a lot of high school, and Oof, yeah. the questions are things like. Wait, do you know if like the assembly is there? And I'm like, I don't know. You, I, I was hoping you would know. Right? <laughs> yeah. When, when like, you're subbing kindergarten, they ask you things, and you're like, uh, like an example is like, um, I, well, I don't know. Jeez, uh, oh, I can't even I'm on the spot now. I they put will ask on you very <laughs> intense questions. But, like you're like, that is a very good question. I am not qualified to answer this. Or they're asking you things that just seems like so mundane and stupid. Like, <laughs> do you like grape? Like, Sounds pretty easy. It that. is, but you're 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 taken aback by it because like <laughs> the high schoolers asking either questions about the topic or maybe yeah. like if like a long term right. sub they'd chat with me more and stuff like that. But then a, a kindergartner is just like, do you like grape? And I'm like, I don't know. No, yeah, it, you'll, you'll be like <laughs> trying to explain what we're gonna do. We're like, okay, so we're gonna work on this thing. Blah blah blah. It's gonna be really cool. And and you just see like like little Johnny's like. Like hands up in the air. I was like, hold on a second. Nothing to do with get it, to right? You in a second, yep. And you're like, yeah. okay. And you're like, okay. What was it? What's up, Johnny? What? How can we? What can we do for you? And you'll be like, do you like grape? And I'll be like, <laughs> right. Nothing okay, to do with what you're on. talking about. Hold on. Anyway, so what we're trying to. <laughs> <laughs> or you have to like, you have to like, oh yeah, it's. I love it. It's amazing. That's where I learned, honestly, like, how to be in front of a stream audience because. Oh sure. Uh, you know, the internet is a pretty mean place, but let me tell you, kindergarten is way meaner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can all wear the same outfit, same shirt. No. Two days We've talked about that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even though it's like, a week apart, if you happen to wear the same shirt and be like, do you even change clothes or are you wearing the same <clears throat> shirt? And like, they say it's super loud when like the principal's walking by or something that doesn't get the context. And right. And just like, wow, you're just oh, like, what a disgusting a, Boy, how a dirty person. Yeah. And, and like, the no, thing no, is, no. the thing is also like, like a lot of the classes I teach, I teach uh, are, are taught once a week. 
Right. So like, well, if you exactly. make that mistake, um, you're like, That's oh it. my gosh, this is the for for two weeks now. That they uh, they must assume I've worn this nothing but this now for for at least a week, right? Exactly. So you have to be you do have to be careful. <laughs> anyway, we were gonna do fan I'm sorry. Uh, fan no that, fan that was stuff. Weird. So here we go we'll again. Uh, let's not really talk about the first one quite yet. <laughs> Uh, but our new uh, segment is called, okay, we didn't actually ask him, but we think John would really like these. Yeah. And there he is. Look at him. Thumbs up from John on yep. this. I love this one. Look at this. This is this so crazy nice. autumn base. Yeah, I love the, uh, the leaves in there. It's something I've always wanted to do, but I, it's so it's so intimidating. Leaf, this is my winner of the week, oh, I've decided. Uh, okay, this okay. thing is beautiful. This kit is beautiful. This is the Lumineth Realm World terrain piece. Yes. Oh, my God. <gasps> Well, this is on point. Okay, I, this is another one I kind of want to cycle back to, uh, only because I now know it's about to switch to the next one. Okay, <laughs> awesome red Necron. Oh, very nice. Scorpec Destroyer. I love, I love Necrons in like, like a colored. They look really like, nice. Other yeah, than not metal, just the silver. metallic yeah. thing. This, yeah. this might be my favorite. Be this is also I love beautiful. this build. This kind of swampy. I, I just, I love this. It's so, I'm bored of this. but that, that was sci-fi. Right, yes. that wasn't an it was AOS just, piece. It was like a low tech sci-fi. I love low yeah. tech terrain like that. I um, love it. Amazing Krieger. Right this here. is great. Um, this orc. You, got, boy. you guys are doing orc. Look at that orcs last light. week. Yeah, it's Pretty nice. Impressive. It's nice and bright. Oh. I like it. Curious to see what they do with the base. Right. Um, oh my god, that banner. Also, amazing banner. Amazing metallics. So crazy. Uh, really nice. God, there is some crazy stuff. I will say, hey, oh, okay, soups. here's Super Super Reedy, uh, and as you guys can see, he put his name up in the top left there. Super helpful. Uh, <laughs> if you want to be, uh, you know, get, get some attribution. Yeah. This is just a nice, clean AOS train. I love that, for, like, fort. It's like a Roman fort. Yeah, really he, nice. he, he did a few of them, I think. Okay, now, uh. <laughs> this is a corn army, and, and that's it. It's That's the pun. Um, I, I don't remember the name of, of who who's that is, They're but so they annoying. have... They have kind of like a unit for everything. Um, I don't know what the actual corn is. Um, I think like the tractors were things like bloodthirsters or or what's the big one? Blood crusher. Um, blood, those are probably blood crushers based off the base. And the and the the, the cows are probably hounds of corn. Oh okay okay. Um, although that's another lost one. That could be a corn dog. Corn dog. <laughs> well, I think he. So look, like I, I think he had a theme, <laughs> and the theme was you know. Corn and the 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 world of corn. Yeah, exactly. C O R N. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. We have to let this go through one more time because I do want to talk about this T Sun. T Sun. Um, this uh, the person who painted this T Sun um, did this color scheme that I actually was thinking about doing. Mm. I'll, I'll kind of talk about why I didn't. Um, but when, when it pops back up, it's like this kind of greenish aqua. Yeah, and I've seen it done before, and actually, they the new even studio kind of color of Thousand Suns for yes. G, for uh, Games Workshop is, is, is a little closer to. It it's is. like this. It's not quite as dark. I'm ultimately going to go a little bit darker blue, um, but I'm going to be using a lot of like turbo dork metallics. I'm going to say you're doing a bunch of metallics. A bunch of metallics. Cool. Um, so the main reason I did not do this kind of aqua scheme for my Thousand Suns because I do love this color. Mm -hmm. um, here's here's the corn army again. I love this. Stop looking away. <laughs> you're gonna miss it. It's such good corn, I know. <laughs> like, you're like, anyways, uh, so oh, we gotta stall again. For I know, I'm gonna stall again. <laughs> okay, so here's this. This is super awesome. Again, I cannot, I've wanted to do an, to do an autumn terrain board for a while. I think we're gonna do it um, yes. early calendar year yes. next year. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the T Sun. And this, uh, I, I love this. I ultimately didn't do anything like this on mine. Because it's like too, it's almost like too close to my towel, uh, yeah. um, and that, that's kind of why, right? I was like, you know, I've already done, a, I already have like a green kind of right. greenish blue um, army. Um, I don't know. It's like kind of like a, a color. You should use it in every single I know, army. I know. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking to the wrong. I, I, I know. <laughs> um, no, that's good. I like that. I'm not gonna respect yeah. that. Uh, I think mine's done. Yeah, I'm, me too. I think we're we're good to go to the. Riveting process. Uh, so this is how, there's many ways to do rivets. Mm -hmm. This is again the kind of cheap and fast way. Well, yes, it's cheap and it's about as fast as rivets can get, <laughs> which is not that fast. Right. So this is again more plastic card. These are almost, in hindsight, these are I think even a bit smaller than the ones I used on the original ones. These are 1 16th inch uh, rods, praise rod, or uh, <laughs> 1.6 millimeters. And uh, they're just, you know, 
this plastic card rods, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna cut them like you would carrots into teeny tiny little rivets that are at least a little bit more wide than they are tall, and we're gonna painstakingly glue them to this. Now, I say painstakingly, but it's really important that you're strategic with this. I'm gonna go um, shoulder. Yeah, here let's for go it, shoulder okay? shoulder yeah. Uh, over here, and. The reason we did all of this stuff first, before adding the rivets, is now we can see where we actually need them. Where do we need to add a rivet that kind of defines a, a space? We can say, okay, if you have like one here under this connection, one here, you could do it in each and every single corner, or you can also just kind of be strategic about it. You know, again, here, 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 you could do two, or you could just do one, and kind of know your own, your own goals. I don't know if I'd do one in the corner here because it's actually just an overhang, so I'm not sure what it would be riveted to. Um, and uh, so that's what we're going to do. So here, I'm going to go ahead and um, cut these up. And I'm actually going to see what's the best way for these ones. I think my knife is a little blunted. Ugh. I said I didn't need a new one, but I might need do a new one. Do you want to use mine? Yes. Use mine. I'll, I'll swap this swap one it out. out. Um, I will read another super chat here. Sounds good. Uh, this one's actually from Megan, who's my wife. And of uh -huh. course, she says, Zach, please give us your best wog before the end of the stream. Yes. Uh, I, I mentioned... Perhaps without uh, the G. Uh, for the end of the stream, K, thanks, bye, she says. Okay. <laughs> now, um, yeah, I don't really do that. Um, <laughs> so maybe we'll see. Guess you don't party either. Ma huh? Maybe we'll see. Uh, <laughs> and then, thank you, uh, let me see here. Uh, thank you, uh, G Guillaume uh, Moussain. I hope I'm saying your name right, but I'm pretty sure so I'm it's, not. Uh, Guillaume Moisson. Oh, that's right, because you have a French family. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Adrian. Effectively willing. Uh, hello, Titans. I have a tournament on Saturday with Ooh. the 10 uh, points for fully painted army. My Drukhari tournament list is 80% painted. Should I take the 10 point penalty or swap for suboptimal painted units? Ooh, that's a tough um, there's two parts to this question, right? Okay. There's yeah. the there's the pride part, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and me and, and like maybe you don't care, and yeah. there's nothing wrong with that, sure. right? And then there's the tournament like part. wanting to win the, the tournament Ten part, right? Is so a lot. What do you what do you think, Adrian? I mean, obviously, it kind of depends on what the, the twenty percent is, but losing an automatic ten points on paint seems not worth it to me personally. So I would I would swap if you can, to be honest. Um, maybe like, yeah, like we'll maybe we're asking minimum. how suboptimal, right? Yes, how suboptimal. Are you swapping all your witches out for Cabalite Warriors? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's like a different thing It's now. all the succubus. It's, it's, like, it's, like, the, it's, it's a, all the raiders. They're actually all on foot now, the whole army. <laughs> right, it's like a very different thing. Yeah, so obviously, yeah, if it's something like that, then take the 10-point hit, because you'll still score 100 points. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then the other thing I would consider... This is, this is horrible advice, but... Like, how painted do they need to be? Like, the reason, one of the many reasons we have not seen my ad mech on stream is because they're tournament ready. Which means they have three colors on them. Period. That's it. Like, they don't, they look okay, I guess, but uh, tournament standard is for me is very different than, like, I am proud of this paint job standard. Um, and um, that's just because that's my own personal preference. So, um, that's, that's the third door, which only open if you... Like don't don't ruin your the life your your life for the next few days to make that happen. Yeah, so um, the, it's it's a fair it's a fair point. Um, you're basically saying like, uh, it, what's that? <laughs> Suck it up now. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah, right. Like, are you airbrushing? If you're airbrushing, maybe maybe you can't knock out. Yeah, they infantry don't have to not any as easy, but edge maybe you can. Colors. Right, maybe yeah. edge highlighting doesn't have to happen. Yeah. Um, maybe pin washing. Recess panels doesn't have to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, maybe it happens later. Hopefully, it happens later. Is there an easy uh, like? Is it doing the the, the weapons again? Uh, could be airbrushed or, or could be not. That's like a that can be a fast step that helps you get your three color minimum quickly. So just some thoughts from someone who is entirely guilty of churning out tournament armies um, at a different standard than his other stuff. So we're just glue and rivets. Hmm? I think these are a bit smaller than my old ones. Um, I like stylized stuff. These are probably more realistic rivets, to be honest. Uh, not orc-sized rivets. But uh, they still look good. Now, I actually found out right before stream as I was doing some of these that my skin is naturally 
sticky and clammy enough that I can literally just, as you guys are seeing, I'm sticking my <laughs> finger into one, and then when I go on the glue, it mostly just stays there. <laughs> it is gross, but like, look how look how fast I just put five rivets down, you know? But you put the glue down where the rivets are gonna go? Yeah. Oh, okay, interesting technique. So I put the glue down first, mm -hmm. and then just use my finger, and it just like, see, somehow works. Just a um, clammy kind of person, huh? Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what's up with that. But like, clammy, but like I'm sticky, but not <laughs> stickier than the glue. <laughs> That's right. And so, killing me. so it mostly works. <laughs> I usually just make a puddle right here with my glue. I get a, again, I want a very sharp blade and I dip it in. And you can see I actually went ahead and just sprayed this panel because they're being a little difficult. But there we go. That's actually much easier to stick. And uh, the next one, so on and so forth. I actually, this process is one of the longest processes of this um, build, but I actually really like it. Like. It's this, very relaxing. For this me. is this is the blocker, right? This is so the blocker. For this sure. is this is the blocker. So if you are, if you are like, oh, I need work train tomorrow, and it's you know six p.m., this is the step that you might skip. But it actually isn't even that long. Like, no, it's that's not. kind of the the, the amazing not. thing about this terrain is like how fast we can crank these out. Exactly. Um, I mean, these ones actually like typically <clears throat> for the stream. We do building and, and then we like don't paint the thing we build necessarily. Right. Um, and like we might already be, uh, under a lot of circumstances, we might already be um, somebody like, you know, if, if Brad and I were doing this, like maybe he's already like halfway painting one. Right, right. Um, that, I, that I would join into. We do a little cooking show magic. But after we tried this out earlier today, I was like, hey, you know, I think that we'll just be okay. I think we'll just be able to get through this like not that hard. Uh, not that, not that slowly, and yeah, because after the rivets, we're pretty much ready to paint, right? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. And the painting is not that bad either. So no, the painting's quite fast. Yeah, that's the goal. So it's it's a nice process. He's he's got this down. Thank you. I will say. Um, thanks again, Nerdotronic. He says you for rivets on plastic card, cut short sticks, then use quick set plastic glue. Come back around with clippers. Repeat. Easier to place and faster to cut. So this makes a lot of sense. What he's basically saying is you are going to make longer sticks, mm -hmm. like not exactly as small as oh, ours are. Yeah. And then you're going to use clippers to clip them oh, after okay. they're, they've been glued in place. That's interesting. Now, here's the issue with that that we found, Neurotronic, yes. is that the clippers, at least our clippers, give like a slight um, angling. Yes. So they won't be flat, but that's maybe that's okay, right? right. Like um, yeah. maybe maybe that all decisions, right? That's that's like a it'd be a, it'd be a different look, mm -hmm. um, and frankly, they look more like almost like I would expect maybe to see like an AOS or something like they'd be like <laughs> they're like yeah iron rot iron <laughs> nail things kind of shoved <laughs> yeah. in, right? Um, maybe some yeah like something that wasn't put in with a power tool, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it would be a cool look. <clears throat> but Nerdatronic, thank you as always Great for suggestion. for the suggestion yeah. and for the support. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of into the idea. I guess if I if I found a set of clippers that um, if I found a way like to clip flat. Yeah. that that would that would end it truly flat. And honestly, you know what I think would be closest? Yeah, might actually be nail clippers. Nail clippers. Yeah, yeah that actually because yeah, they they are actually flat. They're fairly flat. They have the angle, but then they end up flat. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, it's not uh, it's not purely like what um, a part of the equation is also like what are you cutting like and how is it going to end up after you're done cutting it um, and nails don't you know human nails don't quite behave the same way as the plastic. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Zach. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, it, it's a it's an interesting idea. Um, also. We're, yeah, we're not using plastic glue here. Maybe we should. Um, Adrian <laughs> seemed to think that like it was a lazy thing to use super glue instead of plastic glue. We have a lot of debates on the channel about plastic glue <laughs> versus super glue. We don't, do, don't we? It comes up a lot. Yeah, and the people that don't say it, they like they have an opinion, but they're too polite. Like Brett, he was just like, he's like, oh, you're using uh, super glue. I was like, yeah. He's like, hmm. Brett is very I was like what? 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 Brett is very weirded out, just like by by super glue, <laughs> at all for some reason. He's terrified. He has it. I mean, he's got some in his in his in his hobby tackle box over yeah. here. He's always got it. Um, but he's like, I don't know. He's like, 
if you start talking about like using super glue, <laughs> Brett's always like, oh, like, oh, oh. So, uh, so, 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 no, you're using super glue. Hmm. <laughs> He's like, that's that's interesting. I, mean, I know what it means when people say interesting. It means bad. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah, that's a Brett thing. Yeah. He's too nice. He's he's from Michigan. Dang, Michiganians. He's not uh, from a coast like you or me. <laughs> that's right. People <laughs> on the coast, we're just used to, like, life could end at any second, you know? You gotta say what you mean. <laughs> yeah, life could end at any second, and it's... <laughs> look, it, it, here's the thing. If someone's, you know, being a being a schmuck or a jabroni or whatever, they need to know. <laughs> a jabroni, that's classic. <laughs> you gotta tell them. Yeah, you gotta, like... You're doing them a favor, really. You're doing them a favor, right? Yeah. And then they know, and then they can pass it along to the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> pass it forward. Yeah, pay forward. Pay forward, right? Pay forward. Uh, all right. I will say mm -hmm. that the rivets are coming along for me. How are they coming along for you? Um, they're good, actually. I think so. I've done all the essential ones on the panels. Um, I'm just doing essential a, rivets. Essential. Essential. Essential rivets. I've been doing a couple experiments, just putting them in places not on panels. I've never done this before, but I kind of just want to see how it turns out. So, like here, they kind of look like the building has piercings. But I'm also kind of okay with this. <laughs> let's, let's, let's look here. I'll, I'll do a shoulder. Like, these. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. You know, I, we'll see. I, don't, I don't hate it. It's hard to tell because right now it's, uh, you know, I've gone through this whole process already. So most of the stuff like I know, okay, it looks weird. It's going to be fine. When it's like weird different materials, it's, it's hard to tell. Because obviously like these rivets are going to be the same color as, as, as uh, the main building. So we will find out, you know, as Miss Frizzle says, uh, make mistakes. <laughs> oh, from the bus? The magic school bus. You know, one thing I will say about my technique, folks at home, of using my uh, sticky uh, fingers to smash down a rivet I've cut and then put it on. Mm. The only danger here is that you do end up touching the glue a little bit, <laughs> and sometimes, and when, as you do that, that finger becomes no longer able to, to do it. Yeah. So as you can see, I've moved on to my middle finger here to, to do the riveting. And it doesn't actually, my middle finger doesn't seem to be quite as sticky as my index finger. Fascinating. Not sure what's going on there. Well, that's something I wanted to know about you physically. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it's not, I'm not sure it's something I wanted to know about me physically. <laughs> but um, you can see, if there's just rivets all over this. <laughs> I kind of just like, I uh, was learning this earlier from Adrian, it's like I sort of have this uh, approach to the rivets where I just like take the take the little stick and I just start chopping. Yeah. And like maybe fifty, at least fifty percent of the rivets are too big. Yes. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So you end up with like a lot of like useless rivets. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. I gotta do the top. And <laughs> actually, here's the thing though. I will say this in all seriousness about the wasted rivets. Resist the urge to use those big ones because they're just gonna pop off. They're gonna break <laughs> off in the storage container. Yeah, yeah. And right? then you'll have it just like a little unpainted nib. Right. It's on gonna your be building. unpainted. That's what sucks. Maybe. And you're not. Like, then you're going to let go and say, oh, where did the rivet go? And it's like, oh, maybe it's still in the storage container down at the bottom. You're going to have to find it. Or maybe <laughs> it was on another piece of terrain that somebody took out. You're going to find the rivet? Wouldn't you just make a new rivet? Well, yeah, but you'd have to paint that rivet. The rivet would be unpainted. The, Better than finding an unfindable rivet. Well, if it is unfindable, but if you can find it, it's fully painted. You just put it right back. Like, I know your stance on lost model parts. I, I highly, I'm surprised that your rivet stance is so different. But it's fully painted. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, like a dot of paint. <laughs> I, yeah, actually, that's the best option. The best actually, option yeah, just is, to the just, is just be like, all right, there's no rivet here anymore. <laughs> actually, the best option, <laughs> and, and in all seriousness, Don't this this is, is the, yeah, well, no, the best <laughs> option is if you have a rivet go missing, honestly, is probably to take a Sharpie and just put a dot where it was. Yeah, a but, metallic Sharpie. Uh, or a black, or both, one after the other, honestly. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, I do that a lot, actually. I'll, if something, you just sharpie if something kind of small and break, like, um, we're talking like a little tiny area, right? Yeah. Some kind of like little tiny area breaks off, yeah. then I will frequently um, just like take a, a black sharpie mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just real quick. That's fast. Yeah. So, I don't, I know you were watching the stream last night, at least for a while. Um, one thing that came up, which I absolutely loved, is you should do a stream about, uh, terrain renovation and repair and like quick fix it like what you what do you do to like fix terrain and all of like that stuff and what goes into like building terrain that is meant to be broken and how you fix it well no terrain's meant to be broken that's a misnomer well 
Brett, <laughs> let's, Brett told us otherwise. Let's make sure we uh, and Right know. after you dropped the train on your model. No. We're, he Brent. said, uh, it's a good thing that Zach wanted this to happen. <laughs> he actually signed it to do this. It's a good... <laughs> All right, that, was a broad, that was a broadside. That wasn't even <laughs> terrain. My models are made to be broken. Oh, man. Are we done with these? I think we're done with <clears> these. <throat> yes, we did it. Now, I think what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go into wall. Do we want to prime these? Do you want to prime these? Yeah, I'll prime these. Um, cool. Actually, do you have any useful like rivets that are going to be okay over there to use? Oh, See, this is I, missing I some? Few, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So let's talk about this wall real quick and give you this. Um, this is kind of the second thing that we're going to build today, um, time permitting. And this is actually a new piece of terrain, something I was kind of thinking about because I'll be honest, this actually came about through doing like war zones um, for the terrain where I found myself propping these up and like shooting them as if they were walls so you can't see the top and you just kind of get the idea of this like metal texture behind. And I was like, I love this texture, this patchwork metal. I'm like, you could make a piece of terrain, yeah, we can hold it here, that, that does that, that's super lightweight, it's super thin so you can fight through it, that has a very clear base for obscuring. Now this one doesn't have any windows, but you absolutely could give it windows. And, um, and of course this base right here will be painted as if it was just more metal plating. So it's, if I do say so myself, it's kind of ingenious in the way that it's like very functional, but also kind of still fix, fits the story of the terrain, um, or of, of, the, of the whatever it's trying to be. And the last thing I'll say about it is we, again, we're thinking about this idea of how can we make orc terrain that fits on any table and not just, you know, that specific table. Now, if you guys have seen the, the L's and things that I've done for the other table, I very intentionally had like mounds of earth kind of around them that function as the base and was able to pseudo color match that to the, to the mat. Now, obviously, if we want this to work on any table, we don't want that, but I do want a base. So this also solves that problem where it's like, yeah, these are just more chunks of metal. I actually will probably put a rivet right here in the corner just to reinforce that idea. And um, then it doesn't have to have any dirt on it. It doesn't have to match any individual uh, table. So I'm gonna walk us through how to build. Do we want to build this? How are we feeling on time? Uh, pretty, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I think we can do it. All right, cool. You, you have you have the stuff ready to go, pretty much yeah. already. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we're let's gonna go ahead and build this. I'll go top down here on you. Okay? And uh, yeah, let's do this thing. There we go. So this, um, Zach, help me find this material. This is just acrylic plastic. You can get it at any plastic store, which I know sounds a little specialized, but they're actually not. You can find them anywhere. You can, you can also, honestly, uh, that's, and you guys have heard me talk about in the Bay Area, we have tap plastics. Tap there's, plastics. There's others um, where, depending on where you live. But you can also even get that in, in like a Home Depot. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where I got that one. That's awesome. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a couple of these that approximate the size of the other base. I'm not super worried about them being perfect, but I would like them to be close. Uh, that one's kind of short. That one is just a little short. Yeah, actually this one was the perfect one. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and grab these, and I'm thinking, I always make this mistake. I want this one to be inverted. So the longer side is going to go here, and then it's going to dip over here. Perfect. Awesome. This is literally invisible. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me do a, let me do a, uh, oh wait, that's too okay. close. Let's no, do this. Better. Is ah, that, there we there go. go. Cool, there cool. Look <laughs> <I was> like, at <laughs> transparent piece of plastic. All right, cool. So, um, I have them kind of set up at this angle. Um, again, this is where this glue works well. Don't use, uh, hot glue. Um, you could try plastic glue. Maybe it's better. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and spray this here. And it's not a 90 degree angle. I want it to be a bit more natural. I'm kind of tired of 90 degree angles in my life. I'm trying to <laughs> get rid of them. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and press these together and not lean in front of the camera. Beautiful, beautiful. And again, just giving it a second to kind of set. And before I move on to adding anything else to it, I'm going to um, generate some extra good content for Zach. We're going to do a, a brief Dremel and what we're going to do is we're going to dremel this corner to be kind of uh, smooth and connect them. And then we're also going to just round these edges, kind of coming back to that same idea. This is very much an aesthetic choice, but I, I just kind of prefer it. Uh, so I'm going to grab the dremel. Yep. And um, I'm all about safety. I'm going to wear my sunglasses. Now, I couldn't find any safety glasses, so you can just wear regular glasses. <laughs> uh, they're not as safe, obviously. Yeah. 
Uh, I probably should have worn glasses for the show, so I wouldn't have to do this, but here we are. <laughs> it looks, looks pretty great. <laughs> we are styling. To have you sitting there in gla sunglasses <laughs> for some reason. Indoors. This one walks in just like, these, these guys are just the worst. <laughs> these guys are the worst. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire this up. Should I mute myself? Uh, sure. Alright. Sure, sure. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of go through what I'm doing here. And actually, you know what I really want but I can't find is one of my toothbrushes. Oh, yeah. Have you seen one around? No? Okay. Well, <clears throat> uh, folks, all I'm doing is, is priming. No big, uh, no big mystery here. Um, and these, th there's really nothing special to talk about uh, with priming on, on these. We are using our, our primer, um, our paintbrush primer. People ask a lot about what we use, and we like to use this uh, Surface Primer by Vallejo, which Brett turned us all on to, I think. Uh, mostly, and super love it because we can prime indoors. We don't have to prime out in the parking lot, um, and I don't know. It just feels a lot, a lot nicer. Uh, but I really do. I really am missing my toothbrush. I'll tell you guys that. Uh, while Adrian's dremeling. And you'd be surprised, but the uh, the cardboard takes takes the primer pretty well. Like it doesn't get all wet and soggy, um, which I, which is right? which is a good thing. Yeah. yeah. All right, we did it. So we've curved out these edges. Um, the acrylic's nice for that. You can't actually do this with all materials. In fact, the plastic card, if you Dremel, it'll actually it um, it's like a tire in mud, where it kind of just like like builds up this kind of pile of like just junk and it doesn't go anywhere. So you can't do it with a lot of these super soft plastics, but things that's a, a bit tougher. Oh, like right, yeah, can. yeah. So anyways, we've got the base. I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I think I ended up going with using the light, did I? Yeah, I got this, this heavier stock stuff, and I got the lighter stuff. Um, I think we actually used all the big sheets of the light stuff, I just realized. Oh, did we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, oh, wait, nope. Did I put one aside? Yes, clever girl. All right, cool. So we've got this one. It has a little cut off the side, which is fine. And uh, again, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna measure this. Um, I want it to be just obscuring. Do you have the Sharpie? Oh, uh, right here. Thank you. I want it to be just obscuring. So five inches tall. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that off here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. In here. All right. <laughs> Do you thin that primer for the airbrush? Nope, I don't. Um, and I there normally don't have problems with it. Uh, I just need a little toothbrush work. <laughs> I don't know where your toothbrush is, Zach. Jeez. Oh, I know. Um, but it is, of everything that I do have pro uh, that is like more likely to kind of give me a clog in, my, in the Patriot, <laughs> it is probably this primer, uh, which I think makes sense, right? Like. It's, it needs to be pretty opaque. Yeah. Um, so, but no, I don't, I, I don't normally need to use a thinner on any of this. In general, I don't really use paints that need thinners. Um, if I'm using a paint that needs a thinner, uh, I don't know. You just walk away. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know how much I would, I would seriously consider like consistently using that paint if, mm. it, if it really did need a thinner all the time. Um, so, yeah, people are always a little weirded out. We kind of talked about this the other day when we were painting the Beast Claw Raiders. There's like some people who thought it was odd that I don't thin my paints, and then there's people who thought it was odd that I that I brush paint with Citadel Air. <laughs> and I'm yeah, kinda that's weird. I'm kind of like, hey, guys, these are the same problems. Yeah, one of them is answering the other one, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you sit, if you brush paint with Citadel mm -hmm. Air, you don't need to thin it. Like. Um, now, th yeah. I yeah. feel like if we didn't use air paint, we probably could have cut the Shafti bone time in uh, half. <laughs> sure, that was a that was a problem <laughs> that that was an issue between <clears throat> you doing things a particular way and me doing things a particular right, way, right? Right. And kind of not catching on to it, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then Brian being the victim of it, <laughs> and Brian being you know Mr. Nice Guy Canadian and not like saying anything about it, right? Because realistically, I would never straight airbrush Ushanti Bone. 
yeah. onto something. And in fact, when we did the Beast Claw Raiders, I did use Citadel base paints um, for a couple. To airbrush? Uh, no. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. To brush, to do brush. Use work, actual, yeah. To to do actual, yeah, like real brush work. Exactly. Um, yeah, I would not. <laughs> I would not use. I would not use that. Uh, Sorry about your toothbrush. No, it's okay. I'm trying to. I know it's here. I know I brought it. <laughs> um, I might take a second and look I here. Have other brushes. So yeah. what I've done here, guys, is uh, I've glued this this whole panel. Now, again, if you wanted to have this have windows, this would be you do it before you did this step while it's still flat. But I, I wanted to make this match. I'm very much about matchy matchy, uh, equal equal play. Yeah. Um, but we can, you know, these are so easy. I probably will make more and send well, them out well, windows. Yeah. When he's saying match, what what he's meaning here, guys, is that he's going to put these in deployment zones. Yep. Um, because they're they're great for that, and he wants both players to have. The same. Equal terrain, right, yeah. yeah. So uh, I went ahead and I applied the glue to the bottom, and I sprayed the bottom as you saw, and then I went ahead and I just kind of reinforced it wherever I thought it was it was, it was weaker. And it's super solid, honestly. And it's, it's light, it's great. Yeah. And you know, I can just like, you know. And uh, it's awesome. So then what I'm going to do is literally the same exact process that we did for the other building, except this is just one entire surface. And I'm going to want to add a little bit on the base here, again, just to kind of reinforce the idea that this is uh, metal plating. I don't, I want to keep this bottom part though pretty flat. This is yeah. kind of a pet peeve of mine with with um, with uh, terrain where it looks amazing, but it's really hard to have your model stand on. So I want to keep this as close as I can to just completely flush, completely flat uh, as I can. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's do this thing. Look how, look at that coming out. Oh, it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. oh, see, see, a little claw. Oh, little, 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 little chunk. Yeah, if you want to do this, this wall too, when you get a chance. Yeah, I will. All right. Um, <laughs> what? Obscuring terrain in 10th edition has to be six inches. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Adrian, we're playing a little AOS tomorrow. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Um, awesome. What are you playing tomorrow? I'm playing those Beast Claw Raiders that, yeah. that, we, that we painted up on the stream. Um, I went home, finished some more. Got um, a number of other units that we didn't show me painting on the stream. That's right. Or us painting on the stream, because it was a, really a team effort. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited um, to, to play to play on the stream with this new army. Um, yeah, I don't awesome. know. They look amazing. You, you brought them in today. First time I'd seen them all together and finish. And they look so good. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it was, a, uh, it was actually very different from how I'm used to painting. Mm. Um, which is cool. Adrian, I'm just want a shoulder view here, just so it's a little more. Yeah, there you absolutely. Go. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I uh, did a uh, totally different look, right? Like normally, I'm used to kind of painting, like you know, my Tau, my Eldar. Right. They're brighter, they're clean, they're paneled, um, and so this was it was very new to me. Oh my god, this wall, I can pretty much, if my paint had just not run out in the pot, I think I could have primed it in like three seconds. <laughs> Love it. Now, the wall is great, actually. Um, you're gonna, yeah, you're definitely gonna wish you had made more of these. I'm, I'm really in love with the wall. That was, it was a concept at the beginning of the day, from the things that I learned from the other terrain, and I'm really happy with how it's turning out, so we'll definitely be making more of it. Yeah. Um, so we're just pressing this in. Yeah. Oh yeah, Beast Claw Raiders. Yeah, they look awesome. And uh, I'm going to be playing my Night Haunt tomorrow. Uh, first time since Halloween, which we that was the last about. time you guys played them. Yeah, <laughs> they're really bad right now. Um, or they were really bad. I think they're still pretty bad, but I'm excited for. Um, you want to try them on the new edition? Yeah, everything's different with the new edition, you know, and like. I have a really cool uh, command ability I want to use that I could only use once per game before. And I just, I do love that army. It's such a cool army. And it means a lot to me actually because I started the Night Hunt when I got married. And uh, so I actually was given most of the army by uh, my uh, bachelor party and um, including uh, the guys from Frontline Gaming. So we were down in San Diego. And they like took me out, and they're like, first we go, they go to this front line, and they were just like, here's a whole night haunt army. And it was just like the most sweet thing ever. That's that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So it was really really fun, and uh, so I have like a, a soft spot for my night haunt army. Ooh, okay, I kinda, this... I got stylish. That's kind of 
Like, I would wear that pattern on a shirt. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You're like, I wouldn't, but no, you would. I wouldn't. <laughs> it's funny yeah, you say that, because when I was, like, putting some of these different, like, textures and patterns on yeah. the side window, I was like, this feels like, like, that 90s, like, <laughs> yeah. like with the, the print. Uh, almost kind of like the Keith Haring stuff, yeah, like, yeah. stuff, but, like, when it was just, like, the print with, like, yeah, like, the, the triangle and the circle and, like, one's, one's zebra print it's and so one's, true. like, coral. And, but they're all in, like, unnatural colors. So, like. Right, right. <laughs> um, it really, it really kind of reminds Reminded me of that actually. <laughs> kind of into it. Um, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. We one thing we actually do need to do on the stream. God, we have so much stuff we have to do on the stream. Yeah. And on on your channel as well. There yeah. is like a backlog because we have these things that we want to do. These things that like that not. I mean, they're somewhat timely or they're interesting or we right. think like people you guys would like them. Right. So I'll toss one out, right? Like a, uh, a AOS train. We've actually had people bring that up. Yes. We're playing AOS more on, on Titans. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, hey, let's make some AOS train. Right. I want to make like some bumper That's sets. Fun. That'd be so, sort of like we talked about here, exactly. right? Just a few buildings, you know, a few things and just put them. If you need other glue, there's some here. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I think there's plenty, but it's just slowly, slowly clogging yeah. as I've been brutalizing it. Um, Yes. But then something happens, like Thousand Sons and Grey Knights get released in the same weekend. Right? That's our like, whole our whole life for that's a while. Kind of what we're doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's nice when we can get find some, some breathing space and be like, okay, let's make an AOS army, not one that just came out, right? Like, like Beast Claw Raiders. I mean, you know, really, we that army took us. Um, we, I had a lot of help on Friday. Yeah, but you went so fast. But really, I mean, that army happened uh, in in about a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, let me say a week and a half because sure. I, I I started assembling. Today's Wednesday. I started assembling not the past Friday, like a week before we did our mega stream. Mm -hmm. So, um, and and I'm not used to that much assembly. I'll be honest. It's it felt, too much. Felt like a lot of assembly. Yeah. I thought it would be. I thought it would be less. I thought it'd feel like less assembly. Right. 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 It kind of wasn't. Yeah, because you're like, oh, it's only. X amount of models, right? Less than normal. Yeah. Uh, so it's still a lot of big undertaking. It, it is those guys, and we, we we found that out with the with the guardians, right? Yeah. Um, How hard <coughs> could five models be? Right. Six now, models. now I will say this: I did also have this brainstorm um, as I was kind of going through my beast claw raiders and, and finding some things and putting some things away, um, and I was thinking that I we definitely need to have a Gubbins episode with, Gubbins. Br with Bridger, and yes. um, really I'd like to just show like. A few different gubbins from a few different right. armies. So I'm going to save my Beast Call Raider ones. They have a lot of like meat, like yeah. that. You, they have like these Goats. hooks, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so I'd like to just put like meat and knives and <laughs> and kind of like show how we we say, okay, these are this is the meat gubbins. Mm -hmm. These are going to be reds and maroons and stuff. Here are the swords and the axes <laughs> that I they have it. and. Uh, maybe you could throw like a 40k army in there. Here's, yeah. here's some Grey Knight gubbins or what, whatever it is we're working on, right? Totally. Um, and kind of just go through, do cork up a lot of stuff and <laughs> just be like gubbins assembly. Line. Gubbins! Yeah, I'd like to do that actually. That'd be so fun. <clears throat> the yeah, uh, terrain so fixing ideas. thing is also an interesting idea for sure. Uh, it's just something that I think is very practical and people have questions about. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And uh, I was like saying like this is the thing that you do, that you have to do. Um, so, and that's like part of your expertise, especially when we first started working with you. We're like, we we need terrain. We also need terrain that that can get fixed by the person that knows how to do that <laughs> and knows the colors and all that stuff. So yeah, um, it's, uh, I think it's interesting. Fixing terrain is almost like something that I I I you just do. You have to do. Yeah. Um, and it, it's kind of interesting because every time I talk about fixing my terrain. Uh, for like for the club we're in, yeah. people will be like, hey, let's all help okay. Zach fix his terrain. Let's all get oh, together right. on a Saturday and we'll all show up and we'll all help <laughs> Zach fix his terrain. And this idea has been proposed multiple times. Uh, and people who know me well enough now know that that's like not something I'm into. Yes. I mean, uh, and I'll, I'll, Why is that? Uh, well, <laughs> it's, it's so I, I definitely have a little bit of a uh, situation where I do that thing where I'm kind of like it. I'm gonna do it better than other people, right, but I don't right. do that because I think I'm better at well, doing no. it. I mean, it's your terrain. It's You're allowed stuff, to not right? want it to be busted. Well, it's not even that. It's like I know, I know what it is, and sometimes what people fail to think about is that it might take me longer and actually be more work for me to kind of say, "Look, guys, this. If you see something that has wash on it, mm -hmm. don't pull it up because the wash will look weird or right. whatever. Like we have to get glue down in there. We have to use super thin glue or whatever." 
Um, but meanwhile, this over here, you can go ahead and pull that up and then we'll dremel it down. We'll reapply it with plastic glue, like mm -hmm. whatever. And frankly, I mean, I trust you, I trust Brett. There are people I trust for this yeah. kind of stuff. And it's not, that I, it's not that I think that people aren't going to do a good job mm -hmm. or couldn't do a good job with the right direction. Right. Right, but that right direction is going to take a while. I agree. Um, and that's really what you're looking for. I'm looking for the people who can just jump right in and say, yep, I can just put this together. Like, yeah, yeah that, duh, that makes sense. Like, if I pull that up, it's gonna, the coloring is going to look weird, yeah. right? So, uh, it, it is, I, I know kind of a little unpleasant as that can sound, or a little high maintenance from my end. <laughs> um, you know, I do that so that things look good, right? That's, that's the goal. It pays off. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, anyone who's ever had people, oh, what's going on here? Anyone who's ever, I'm wondering if this is a, a splattering of glue, of goo gone. Oh, no. Let's take a look. Oh, oh boy. Happening? It's coming off. Oh, boy. So <laughs> we have some, 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 uh, oh, this is That's top me. down on you. Sorry. We have some speckling here on our, on our thing. And I'm, I'm kind of wondering on Can our primer. I'm kind of wondering if it was, if it was goo gone. Let's see what happens if I go over with another coat. Uh, if it's, any, coats. if it's anything like resin mold line release. This uh, will do what? Nothing? <laughs> Not mold line release, excuse me, mold release, yeah. um, then that will do what it's doing right now and we'll set it down and in a couple of minutes it'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're scaring me then. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, <clears throat> you know, I did, but yeah, I guess, was it here and I used a little Google and I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. The splattering is definitely sus uh, suspect. Yeah, it, it definitely, oh, I have you in shoulder here, but I'll oh, go, right. is, it, is it better for this too? We'll yeah, this yeah. Too. Okay. Uh, well, we'll see. It looks like maybe it's it's working now. Maybe, maybe I was just uh, it was just me mixing. The other thing it could have been mm -hmm. is um, maybe I, I I did like blow back in my airbrush to clean it. Yeah. And like it, oh, I, I did have one that was a little got, got a little ahead uh, away Whoa, from me. That's such a cool sound. Yeah, I did have one that like splattered water everywhere. I, so I think that actually is what it was. It looks like it's okay now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm hearing a lot of words, Zach. We'll see what. Well, I like. would, yeah. So, I mean, to reinforce, so I would definitely like, I would definitely get any goo gone that you do use on. Like, I can't stress that enough. I like, get it off. Get of, it gone. Get it gone. Yeah, like the goo gone is like uh, in some ways worse than leaving the sticker on. <laughs> yeah. You could almost like I actually thought we were gonna when you came in. I actually thought we were gonna leave the stickers on. I tried for a second to pull it off with my mm -hmm. nail. I was like, oh, it's on there. He just wants to leave these on. And then I saw you bring goo gone. I was like, oh, that that'll that could work. And like you just you don't know. Like yeah, yeah. Sometimes like goo gone is just not enough. Like it just no. like, depends on what type of glue they it's use. It's such a pain. And like honestly, the first time I did it with these guys, I didn't know about goo gone. It was just like they're all like scratched up, and it took so much. Work work so um yeah you know figure out what works for you well that's part of it but like you're also gonna like you 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 guys are gonna get goo gone and you're gonna get something <laughs> and you're gonna go oh yeah i saw adrian and zach do this <laughs> yeah, great true. and you're gonna use it and that's it's gonna true. do like nothing look i can i can't show up on this hobby stream and be like yeah just do whatever works for you <laughs> yeah no <laughs> that's I know. not good advice yeah, it is, no it is good advice but <laughs> You guys are gonna find some things yeah. Google on like it's gonna be like no thanks. People also use WD forty. Really? Um, if you don't want to use Google on, yeah, it's weird. It's also mm. it's like a degreaser. Great band. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because it's also a de uh, degreaser, a right. lubricant, it does all kinds of stuff. People kind of forget about that. So like if you are you know again working and you're like I I'd like to crank this out right now and not have to go get Google on. Um, or whatever, or wait for it to arrive if you're ordering it. Like, you can use WD-40 if you're more likely to have that at your house. Yeah. Um, and it, it does work. It doesn't work as well as Goo Gone. Um, uh, meaning that I, I find, like, you guys saw what I was doing with the Goo Gone. It was, like, on and off in a second. Uh, WD-40 yeah. has to sit and it has to soak. Does it work, like, better on European labels, maybe? <laughs> Probably. Uh, Definitely. European labels, like, you can use a hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> Just breathe on them. Uh, who's playing each faction Saturday? That's a great question, Traylon. Uh, so, so my friend Jesse, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a friend and teammate, um, and playtester, is going to be on a Saturday uh, playing the Grey Knights because it's a faction that he actually had a lot of experience with, um, and so he'll be playing the new book, and I'll be playing Thousand Suns as long as everything gets together, which I think we have a good plan. Looks like it's probably going to happen. Um, but just putting that caveat on there that we want to make sure it all looks good and we're comfortable with how it looks. Again, 
you know, referring to earlier on, to the thing earlier on, where there's like there's painted and then there's painted for stream. Uh, so that's that's what's up. This might be a mix of the two. Um, ultimately, <laughs> uh, ultimately, I'm working on Thousand Suns. Mm -hmm. I think you will be. Oh, I started. You started. Okay, good. Um, so ultimately, we will have plenty of Thousand we're Suns. We're gonna have a ton of Thousand Suns. Um, I think we're. I think we're. Um, it's an army I want to own anyway, yeah, so exactly. um, we, we, we should have it. I, I'll be cranking that out. Yep. And uh, maybe next Wednesday, um, actually not really maybe, almost definitely. pretty much definitely, we will be doing some Thousand Suns Sons? stuff on stream. It's going to um, be super cool. Because that's literally all I'm going to be doing. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's your life. 10 days, yeah. Well, it's also, it's also the, one of the two armies, that and Dark Mechanicus, that uh, was uh, the Tabletop Titans stretch goals way back in uh, last year when we when we were like kind of pushing for our for, for memberships, and so um, we have the army. It's time. Yeah, they weren't super fun to play before, so they've been kind of waiting. Yeah, and Grey Knights oh, is God. an interesting army. I think long term the plan is to make John our Grey Knights player. Right? Yeah, John's gonna learn the Grey Knights, but uh, he's visiting family uh, for this week, so you know, good timing, John. And, yeah, and um, I knew it was gonna happen. The Grey Knights are, are an army. Like I, I don't know. I feel like uh, I know a lot of people are excited about Grey Knights. I think they're cool. But as far as wanting to play Grey Knights, I feel yeah. like we kind of were talking about in the studio, and like it, it, it was like who, who's excited to play Grey Knights? And it was a little bit of crickets, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like, all right, John, you're the Grey Knights. It's John's, it's, I want to play John, John, yeah. <laughs> John, stop playing every Eldar faction only, and here you're now playing Grey Knights as well. Part of the gig, you know. Um, it, it's it's a cool it's a cool army, um, but you know what's so interesting about Grey Knights in the lore is that I, I do have to say I, Grey Knights players, both in the lore and the playstyle over the past ten years, mm -hmm. because of Primaris, because of Custodes, I do feel like they have sort of ha feel like many of them have have lost like this uniqueness that they once mm. had. They were sort of this yeah. elite, mysterious Space Marine chapter. <laughs> We've got a few of those. And now there's a lot of those, <laughs> right? And, and there's custodies, right? right? And so, like, um, yeah, I, 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 feel like they, yeah. I feel like they've been watered down a little bit. Um, and, and then the, the solution is, like, well, let's lean into their anti-demon aspect. Right. But when that shows up in the game... That's not always fun, right? Like, here's no. an army that's very good it's at beating so demons. horrible. And, like, demon players are like, yeah, I don't... I don't want to play against that. Yeah. And the Grey Knight players are like, but that's what I'm good at doing. Like, yeah. I, realistically... This is my thing. It just didn't matter in the other nine games that I played. Right. So I'm excited. And you're like, well, that's good for you. That's but. how I feel about, like, as a Tau player playing Death Watch. I'm like, wait, <laughs> you have a stratagem that is exclusively ruins my day. Yeah. Like, like, the thing I'm good at doing, this, like Brett's saying, like, my army gets to do their thing, right? You have right. a... You, you have a... This is basically a giant troll army. Yeah. Is what Xeno's players 100%. feel about it. I'm like... I don't really want to play against Death Watch. <laughs> yeah. Like, you want to play an army that isn't designed to defeat my army and has like specific stratagems for it. Sounds you know. fun to me. That said, it is the perfect army for uh, Titan Watch. Mm -hmm. So I will be excited to see that. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't have to play them against your um, your town. Look, I mean, I the, interesting. You'll be honored to lose to Titan Watch. Interestingly enough, um, for for all that said, they. Uh, you know, they are just a normal Space Marine army with uh, there's a lot of normal Space Marine stuff, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. They, they haven't made the stratagems, like, too crazy. No, they haven't, honestly. Uh, they're, they're just, like, a little annoying. <laughs> <laughs> they're just a little annoying. Wait till I get all my marker lights on. Okay, now your marker lights are gone. Okay. God. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Really I get it. Right. Vincent, I'm not sure what you're referring to. You just said, tell us about that, Adrian. Uh, well, we were talking about Thousand Suns. We were talking about... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We'll find out on Saturday. Yeah. Um, how are we doing here? So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much good here. Um, Rivets? We can rivet. I think we can also start transitioning over to paint as well. Why don't so, I rivet this and prime this for you? And then these guys are ready for you to start painting. Sounds great. Um, so I kind of tore up my thing. And I, really, I mm. probably shouldn't get paint on this. Yeah, so let's piece, do this. Let's we'll grab we'll a sheet, put a maybe. piece of ink newsprint down. <laughs> It will not be our, our uh, nice brown, but there Perfect. we go. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get to Paint Town. And the painting is very, very simple for this, just like everything else. That was kind of the goal. Um, I think we're good with this. Can I get the pink glue back in? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, pause for coffee. 
tried your vanilla coffee. It was very disturbing. Yeah, not a fan. <laughs> so sweet. All right, so let's start with this little one right here. Um, as usual with my models, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it up with some uh, black paint just to kind of hit, uh, clean up where the primer uh, might have not gone. And um, then we'll, we'll get going. Now that's, you, you usually do that? I always do that. Interesting. Yeah. Um, there's just little cracks and stuff that it might, crevices that it might have missed. Well, okay. No, I guess I could just use uh, black primer. Right, right that was what I was going to ask. Um, oh, let's do it. But you're talking about like if you did rattle can. If I did rattle can, yeah. exactly. Which makes more sense. And it's not particularly like, accurate. Like, like it does make sense because like sometimes you rattle can, like I would rattle can at night. And then, like, yeah. then, yeah, like go blowing. inside, and there's like lights finally, and I'm like, oh, I got like maybe 85% of this model. Exactly. But I'm like, but I got, you know, like enough everywhere that I think I could be okay if I hit it with like a bad in black or something. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, yep. I've definitely done 100%. that. 100%. That's exactly it. I guess that's I guess that's kind of why I've asked because I've been using this spray primer. Oh, you just don't you don't know what it's like to be a, a regular person anymore. Yeah, wow. you just like I, nice. I was about to ask you. It's like, don't you just want to use the primer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially this one because um, I'm gonna be like it's not uh, the black color is not gonna be the main color here. It's gonna be a lot of silver, and the silver is gonna be that first true true layer. So it doesn't matter that this isn't the black I want. I'm very excited to have like an like we were saying like an orc, just to be able to be like, hey, let's paint the board orky today. Right. Super excited. Every every board should be an orc board. <laughs> I'm not sure I agree with that. <laughs> the only but, good good board is an orc board. Yeah, but um, it is nice, and honestly, I I would like to be able to have that like more, for for most factions, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Like when for, when I make a board. Many of my boards um, I, I immediately have a faction in mind. Uh, and we are going on to an Eldar board here very shortly. Uh, and then Ooh. I think... Is that going to be the, the Autumn one? No. The Autumn one I think is going to have to happen in 2022. Wow. Uh, because I think what we're going to be doing... You're, you actually brought up Cromlech earlier. Okay, okay. Um, they released a line of Necron stuff that is just oh, yeah. amazing. That's right. Um, and so I think our last board of this calendar year, after the Eldar board, is going to be in the fall, in the winter, um, is going to be a, a, a Necron board. That's exciting. Um, and I actually kind of just want to do almost no wilderness, just basically like, Desolation. but not exactly a city, um, but something kind of, kind of in the middle that I think is going to be exciting. Right. Um, here, let's uh, zoom in on here real quick. You can keep going, I'm just... Uh, the shoulder, there you go. <clears throat> the shoulder, like, now that you're doing it, right, it's just, like, not quite where you think it would be. No, it's not. <laughs> not at all. But yeah, super excited for the Necron board. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's, it'd be nice to have, like, some Xenos faction boards. Yeah. Um, and then I, I think, I think one of the goals here. next year is definitely going to be to do, like, um... Definitely gonna be to kind of like make more bumper stuff for our existing yeah. wildernesses. Um, nice certainly stuff. come up with some new ones as well. And yeah, the autumn one is, uh, I think, gonna be towel, a towel board. Actually, a couple of towel boards coming down the couple pipeline. of towel boards. Yeah. You think we're gonna play towel? I, I do think that, yes. <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, well, the thing is, I, I have like a, I have so much of it. I backed a Tau Kickstarter from MicroArts. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, Wasn't uh, that what the, the snowboard is from, MicroArts? That's, that is, yes. And so I've, I've even more of that stuff. Jeez. Uh, I have a mat that they made as well, like a towel mat. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot. That's wild. And frankly, Brian has... Um, Left left a bunch of this, uh, the the Tau gun lines. Oh that, yeah, yeah. The Citadel makes. <laughs> so we're really actually pretty flush with Tau terrain. This is true. Um, and you know it's <laughs> it's a popular army. Uh, when the when down it the is. road, right? Like who knows when? But when that Codex comes out, you'll be ready. You're gonna be you're gonna be sick to your stomach, I think, Adrian. I, I will be because everyone's gonna be like, I won't play Tau again, Tau again. Because like, you know, Brid I mean, Bridger likes it too, right? Like, 
Yeah, he um, does. So it's not like it's just me and Brad. When I first or, met him, he was playing Tao. He yeah. was playing his Crayola Tao. Yeah. Uh, look, Tao is super cool. And I will fight them any day. So I'm just, I just grabbed the second hut real quick, guys, because might as well. So I've got the silver out, and we're just, we're just getting massive covers. This is the same principle that I almost always follow with my first layers. Um, this can be messy. It's all good. We're going to go back over the parts that we want to go back over. And so we're just hitting it up with a bunch of silver. This is Vallejo Game Air Pure Silver, I think. No, just silver. Um, and it's beautiful. For this, um, this is nice. You get like a lighter look. I, I frequently, uh, like I did on my on my ogres, mm. um, we'll, we'll start with Lead Belcher. Oh, yeah. As yeah, like yeah. my bottom one. But I actually, um, to be honest with you, I'm not sure that was even the right call for my ogres. Um, right. People are saying uh, that they came out okay and good, and they look I, right. I, I, of course I always appreciate this. Uh, and I, I don't, I don't mention that to be like, oh, everyone says my ogres look good because probably everyone doesn't think that. But you know what? <laughs> um, they look pretty good. I'm happy with them. But I think they could be a little brighter. Right, right. Um, and again, it might be me doing that thing where I'm uh, like used to a brighter army. Right, right. Um, oh, definitely, that's definitely part of it. Yeah, I uh, like to start. With this kind of stuff, I like to start bright and then work my way down and just kind of like the weathering and washes will we'll darken it. Because um, I find, especially with metals, it's a lot of work to get them back up in brightness. Yeah, and and, and frankly, I, I put lead belcher on. I, I frequently, you know, I did want it to kind of look like weather, mm -hmm. uh, weathered stuff. Um, uh, not, not super nice, clean metal, right? Right. But... Um, you know, I, it, it's it's kind of dark, but it's okay. Um, I, I, you know, the animals are bright, and so it's kind of... I, I ended up being okay at the look, yeah. but, you know, I think, like, people at home, right, like, we all feel a little weird when, like, the end result is nice. We're like, okay, I, I like how this looks. <laughs> but it's not exactly what I wanted. Right, right, and, right. And you end up kind of questioning yourself. And you say, you know, this looks good. Um, people, people who's who who I think are know their stuff have said, "Hey, you did a good job." You know, I listen to you. I listen to, to Megan. Um, people who uh, who are good painters that I know. Right. Um, just to kind of check things along the way, which is never a bad idea, yeah. of course. Exactly. Um, and that's great, but I can't. Again, you can't shake the feeling that like you're d they're done. <laughs> you're sitting there looking at them. You're like, "Yeah, I like them," but I wanted them to be like. 20% yeah. brighter, exactly. a little bit. Um, and maybe my the way I did that metal is, is a part of that, actually. You're always going to be your own worst critic. That's true. That's, that's also you know? very true, yeah, of course. Um, but we'll see. Excited for tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be awesome. Excited to freeze some ghosts and then eat them. <laughs> Gotta free them. That actually happens in the lore. Can you believe that? Yeah, it's so crazy. Like, we're here to free you. Do not resist. <laughs> you know? What? Wait, wait. No, sorry. I said freeze. Freeze? Yeah, so you like... freeze the ghost? There's a... What there, thought you are going to like kill them and like... No, 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 no. Remove their shackles. No, no, because ogres don't do that, right? They just You're do just going to freeze the ghost? There's like... There's a someone thing, else to deal with? There's a thing in the lore where like uh, uh, Nagash, you know... Like, because Nagash is like this meddling, right? M Megan's reading about Nagash. Yeah, yeah. He's like... I think you described him as a Saturday morning cartoon. He's villain. a Saturday morning villain. Yeah. Yeah, he and like, he, he yeah, like he like assumes something happened. He's like, oh, I'll just like have these night haunts or the ghosts or something. I forget who fight these ogres because they just want food. Right. Um, but like the ever there. winter freezes the ghosts, <laughs> oh, and then the ogres <laughs> like break them sense. apart and eat the ice. No. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't make any sense. No, nope, it's the ever winter. It's not like a normal. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like a stretch. That's like a Looney Tunes move right That's there. That's like a Looney Tunes. Oh, my God. The, the I big, love it. The I biggest stretch in lore ever, I think, is when uh, that... that it, It's up there, right? What are, like, the biggest stretches? We should do... That's a... Biggest stretches? The biggest stretches yeah. in, in 40K or <laughs> AOS <laughs> lore. Um, I think, for me, the biggest one is in Blackstone Fortress when uh, Grek, the Crute Shaper guy... Crew can like eat something and kind of like learn information from yeah. it, like a gene stealer almost. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Greg takes one of those drones, the the little drones yeah. that live there. Yeah, the spindle drones. He like 
breaks part of it off and crushes it in a mortar and pestle and then like inhales it. What? <laughs> like, and he learns the drone's memories. Oh. Yeah, pretty much. He like no. snorts a drone. Does the drone have DNA? It's, it's basically DNA No, I don't think so. Thing. Right. So like that's why I'm saying I think that's like the biggest lore stretch <laughs> to date. The freezing night haunts and then eating them like popsicles is up there. <laughs> it's definitely up there. Gosh, I'm just like... I think I jinxed myself. I but, but both of these here. are centered around, I realize, the same concept, which is like... Eating things. <laughs> eat, eating things. Man, make me hungry. Nagash. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nagash is like... Bugs making fun of you. How, do, oh, not, not, how, how should I say it? You could say Nagash. Look. I will never... Say how do you say it? Nagash. 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 Uh, Nagash. 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 Yeah. That's another Nagash. thing. That's another thing with, with young students, with kids. They uh, are if you pronounce something differently, like... Differently. Like, I say... I have mostly, like, an American accent, but there's a few things that just, that just like, comes out. It's like... Like, I say data. You know, you're like... You have the, 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 you have the data. The data. Okay. Yeah, Americans wouldn't say, like, data. And they're like, you're saying it wrong. That's not the way you say it. I'm like... Kids will do the... Yeah. Like... <laughs> don't tell me my accent's wrong. It's literally not, like... <laughs> That's, you're wrong. <laughs> I know, I know. And then like the other thing, the thing that happens with me a lot with kids and, and like them telling you you're saying something wrong or doing something wrong, kind of yeah. the primary? You may. Is um, people, like I cook a lot and people are like, oh yeah, cook, my kids will my kids will love whatever you cook. I'm like, no, they won't. No, they won't. They won't. And, and like, what, what are you gonna cook? I'm like, I I'm gonna do like bolognese spaghetti. They're like, oh, my kids love that. They love like, spaghetti. <laughs> they love yours. Yeah. Or they love the one from Costco. Yeah. <laughs> they do not love mine. <laughs> And it's not because mine's weird. No. They just don't. Like, exactly. people are like, oh, oh, you're making mac and cheese? Oh, my kids will love it. And like, no, your kids love the Boston Market mac and cheese, and they love your mac and cheese. Craft dinner. Right. And they do not love my mac and cheese. <laughs> like, exactly. I, I, could, I could go and buy Boston Market mac and cheese yeah. and give it to your kids, and they still wouldn't like it. <laughs> they, 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 right? Like, the, no, this you're is, totally this right. That's how it works. Yeah. Like, kids yeah, like, yeah. That's, no, that's not what I'm like, used why to. Why are you being unnecessarily optimistic about this? It's just going to cause pain in the right. future. Right. Uh, um, let's see if this airbrush is done being difficult. Oh Probably yeah. Probably because it's an airbrush on stream. I know, right? So far so good. So what I'm going to do now, as, as you kind of notice, I have a similar workflow for a lot of my projects. Um, for my paint projects, I'm going to go ahead and use this black to kind of clean up these areas. Again, not too much. In fact, I'm actually going to go ahead and let it actually bleed over into the silver a little bit. Um, it sort of gives it, again, a bit of depth. We're kind of just darkening it in certain yeah, places. Shoulder here, you. Shoulder um, you there. Yeah, you shoulder me. Shoulder you. And then, so we're going to do the same here. Just kind of cleaning up. I've been doing my buildings with a good amount of black in them because it's just kind of very forgiving of, like, big, big sections of, like, nothingness, basically. And you'll see what I mean once we get a bit farther in this, in this boy. Um, I really like this window one. I'm actually, I'm really feeling it. It's like a... Little uh, river shanty boat house thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they all kind of look like that, right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> they're so cute when they're tiny. Also, look at these little faces. They're definitely faces. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, the face is amazing. <laughs> oh, God. They basically look like little tanks. All right, let's see. Uh, I mean, you know, you you had like a like a vehicle that I use, I, I was like, hey, can I use this as terrain? Yeah, yeah. You had like a... Sure. It was a, a battle wagon. Yeah, it was like a battle wagon with the death roller, right? Yep. But you had it like as like a flatbed truck. <laughs> yeah. And so I like parked it in the mech shop. I was like, this looks like, this is perfect, right? Like, exactly. <laughs> the stuff of the, of the, that's in the mech shop and the mech shop itself, not that different. Actually, the mech shop's a funny thing because that one is like truly a found piece. That is from a child, like fire station or something. Yeah. Um, and that was like, the box was broken, so it was like mega on sale. Nobody wanted it. And I was like, I will take you and I will love you. And I, you know, took it apart just down to the structure. Because like, here's the thing, guys. Games Workshop has, makes really good, but really expensive kits. And there's a lot of things, even like kids toys or, you know, we'll talk about squirt guns in a, in a later episode. But like, there's lots of materials out there that are like, if you think of them not as what they are, but if you think of what it would cost you to buy that if it was a miniature, it is pretty crazy. So just be open to be, to saying like, yeah, I'm going to use this as a miniature. I'm going to do a few things to maybe update the scale, make it a little less toyish or whatever it is. And it works really, really well. So I basically just took this thing 
And uh, because it was it was so cheap, I could just basically use the structure of it, the frame of it, to build a 40k building from. And just like the rest, I just didn't need, you know. And it's still like a really cheap piece of terrain as far as uh, you know wargaming goes. Yeah, I, I think like um, the 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 squirt gun stuff and the the kids toys like. Again, you have to be careful, right? Because Naturally. you can, it, like, in general, I think the move is, like, deconstruction, right? Deconstruction. It's, yep. If you can deconstruct what it is that you want to make terrain out. And, like, the skill is almost like being in a store, being in a dollar store, being in a children's store, yep. like, toy store or something like that. And being able to look at something and say, like, well, what if I took that thing apart? And, exactly. And, uh, and a lot of us who are in the hobby like doing stuff like that anyway, right? We're used to, like, building kid and uh, kit bashing and stuff. Yeah. But it's very cool to be able to like just look at something and say, you know, what if I took this apart? Um, what could I take up, take away from it? What could I add to it? Right. Um, it's what are the, just the raw materials of it? Well, th you know? this is it, right? The, 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 that's the second part. The second part is saying, in my opinion, like the way I think about pink foam, the way you think about this corrugated cardboard, totally. like it's something in your wheelhouse now. Mm -hmm. So whenever you see some options, um, you know, I'm a me, like, hmm, how how could pink foam play with that? Yeah. How yeah, could pink yeah. foam work with that? How could, you know, now I think plastic art, corrugated uh, cardboard. Back. Like, how can these turn that thing into something more? You know, my, mm -hmm. my general instinct is bits and yeah, uh, and pink foam, right? Exactly. It's kind of, kind of uh, <clears throat> and, you know, with Brett, we're always now like, hey, Brett, want to do some, uh, want to do some 3D printing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you just need like a little like, like griblies to kind of elevate something, yeah. right? little mechanical bits or control panels or things that are from like an actual miniature model that kind of transform it into like this new role. And this is actually like for better or worse because not everybody always needs them and you're kind of like, why am I paying so much for a GW kit? Half of the things in the kit I'm not even gonna use. Right. Then they're gonna, they're gonna go into my bits bin. And it is true, like if you look at older GW kits, um, oh, yeah. oh my God. or if you look even at uh, a lot of third party kits, mm -hmm. um, like I, I love the Pegasus Hobby uh, Gothic Ruins okay, kits. Yeah. I, we I've worked with them before; they're great. But they literally come with zero extra pieces. Like, <laughs> ah, no. I think I think that's not quite true. They come with like one giant boat and comes with like four torches. Right, right, um, right, right. And is that a good thing or a bad thing? You're probably paying less potentially for that. Yeah. Um, not 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 even for the plastic, but really just for the designer. Right. The designer is the person who did that design. Uh, you know that uh, the whole process is probably about like keeping costs down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and competing with Games Workshop on price in yeah. a way that's you're gonna win, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 so yeah. the whole way along that process, you, you feel that, and when you get that building, you're like, well, it doesn't have all the bits, you know, but I only use 25% of the bits anyway. Right. Um, but you know, you, we all accumulate these bits over over yeah. years, and Seriously. yeah. This is the type of thing they're they're good for, right. honestly. Yeah, it's all those those, those project, projects come back to them, you know. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm going in with this white, and preparing for these bright layers of the of the orange, in particular. Um, so we have a bunch of these like panels that are now uh, kind of white with a fade, and we're gonna do some some orange in uh, just a sec here. You want to just keep focusing on those two, Adrian, or should I hand you some more? Um, I think I'll focus on these for now. Okay. Um, we can do some. We can finish up tomorrow. We don't have to do them all on stream. Yeah. Well, if you want, you can also you can start on those yeah, two. Yeah. So if you're, if white, you're white on. Um, so so first, no, first, first step is the silver. Okay. So just silver, pretty you know liberally everywhere. Uh, but avoiding mostly avoiding panels. So I went back and did black over the panels. So if you want to not do that step. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can, but I just, just, just everywhere with the silver is totally okay. fine. Well, this is where I'm going to be a airbrush snob. Mm -hmm. and use my Sotar and wow. try to avoid that step, although not sure if it's going <laughs> to happen. No, that's totally fair. All right, um, cool. So I do have these panels and I have more of these stencils. This is one of the instances where the inverted stencils are nice because, uh, for example, what do we have? Where's that panel? I saved it specifically. This one right here. Um, this is just pure white, and it's going to go to orange. And I like the white. I like white with orange. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these. Maybe uh, we've got a little wrench here. Got a little skull dude. Skull dude's pretty nice. 
Um, so let's grab a knife. And I'm using it to actually just peel this stencil off. Okay. Yep. That's up there you are. Let's get up nice and close. All right, cool. So I just basically used it to split these two, which is the sticky half. Here's the sticky half. And I'm going to go ahead and apply it like so. Just pressing it down. Wunderbar. And do you want to do another one somewhere else? No, I think I have other plans for it, so, so this is going to be good. So we got this. I'm going to go ahead and grab my orange, which as always is the uh, Vallejo Model Air orange. Give it a good shake. You love this color. I love this color. And it smells like chocolate. It does smell like chocolate. <laughs> so here on the stencil, I'm going to go ahead and apply it. And of course, this is going to leave the, the inverse of this when I remove the stencil in a bit. Now I'm gonna go ahead, you can see as I tilt it where the kind of wet parts are. And I really wanna avoid that as much as I can with this because you don't want it to kind of soak into the actual stencil itself. So we'll come back to that. I'm gonna go ahead and just do orange and all the others, these other kind of panels uh, in the meantime. And uh, not block it for you guys. Mm-hmm. This one here. I'm hitting this angle like so. Getting it nice and rich. Ooh, that's good. I like that orange. Has a nice orange. Cool. And then this one. So you can see because it's such a thin paint, which we've talked about before, it's just going to keep that fade right there that I've already kind of set up from the white to the black. <coughs> yeah. And just a couple more drops. We'll actually finish it up there. I'm going on like a very brief hunt. For your toothbrush? For my toothbrush. But I don't think I have it. It's good here. We've got one more. And then honestly, one thing I'll do, and I'll do it here. Let's finish up this skull is I will, I will use the orange actually on the metal to kind of help create some, some rust effects um, and just some, some basic weathering. This is a, a, a case where I will do this weathering. What I'm not going to do today is the, the powder. The powder is actually the one I used to give it that, that red kind of tint that really brings it in line with that, that uh, board that you guys are used to seeing this terrain on. And so uh, this is all fine. This is like generic rust. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and apply. You can see I've already got a bit of bleed here, which I actually like. And it actually has this really nice kind of, it's like metallic still, but now also orange. And um, even more. <laughs> Look at that. And uh, it's one of a few layers. It's going to actually look really nice once we wash it, especially. It's going to really feel like rust. Maybe a bit on the bottom. We don't want to overdo it. We want just the whole thing to be kind of orangish, but a little kind of segments, a little bits here and here. It looks, yeah, it's looking amazing. Thank you. That's it's actually just like such an easy way to imply rust. Yeah, it's implying rust, exactly. So nothing fancy, just a bit here, a bit here. We'll come in with some browns later on. All right, looks good. Let me give this a rinse and then um, maybe we'll pull off the stencil. I don't want to rip it off too soon, but we'll see. So this is exciting. I'm excited to have all these extra orc buildings. Right? I know. I, I'm like bummed that we just did the orc. We just used it for a week. I know. Well, we'll get more for sure. Yeah. Um, well, and then, of course, like we said, this the purpose of this is to like... Be we'll able, see more of it. Be able to add Look, it to... We are going to see orcs around, for sure. You know, it'd be funny. Like, we, we stick with one board, but like... We're on the same board, but one of the days, the board also has some work stuff on it, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. So we can do it without committing to an entire week now, which is kind of the cool thing. Exactly. Was, you know, the tiger board, we've already talked about this, but the tiger board was kind of the first example of it, and we kind of showed like how flexible it is now, and so we'll right. be able to do this now. Like, next week, well, probably not this upcoming week, but um, 
We can just kind of sub in one game. We'll have some works on it. We'll do that. It'll be cool. So people are always uh, chat with me about do I thin my paints or not thin my paints? Yeah. Right now, I'm thinning my paints, guys, because uh, it's a combination of a paint I'm not used to using. Yeah, it's a weird paint. Uh, the Sotar, which is always like, if you're going to have to thin a paint for a particular airbrush, this is the airbrush. <laughs> um, certainly over the Patriot. And then also, finally, I don't have my toothbrush, which is driving me nuts. No. But the toothbrush is really how I keep things clean while I, while I paint. Um, because the, one of the biggest dangers of like while you're painting is what's, what's like most likely to go bad is that you're going to get dry clumps on the mm -hmm. needle and then the, the brush is going to pull them back in. And the, yep. the thinner the needle, like a Sotar, the more damaging that's going to be. Exactly. So, um, yeah, really need to, to use some thinner. And in fact, I didn't even have to clean my airbrush to get to start working again. I literally just had to put thinner in, which, <laughs> you know, thinner is... Uh, kind of the same. <laughs> well... Without detergent, right? So, so yeah. yeah, so it has uh, the ability to do that if if what's if the issue is purely like some kind of physical thing. Right, makes sense. All right, I'm gonna try to reveal this uh, this thing. Let's get a close up on this because oh, yeah. this seems like a into this kind of thing. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. Oh, got some white there. So I'm using the blade just enough to pull it up there, and then I'm not gonna mess with anything else anymore. Ooh, smexy. I like it. So there's that nice skull. Um, got that bit of an orange kind of glow around it. And uh, yeah, I'm into it. I love it. Thank you. Stencil reveals are. I would just watch, like, we should just do stencil re reveals, really. We, I mean, sure, we, we could make a clip show for sure. We've, we've done enough, right? <laughs> that'd, be, yeah. that'd be really funny. Just exactly. like, well, maybe give it a year. Like, we should do, we should do some shows like that. Just like <laughs> all, the, all the table, all the Hobby Titans clip shows right. in the past year. That'd be amazing. Or all the, excuse me, all the Hobby Titans stencil reveals. Right. All at once. All right. So we're going to do just a bit of uh, good old blue and green and emerald. Uh, I'm thinking about where I want to do checkers and where I want to do this. Um, no, this is good. I like this. Oops. Water that one too much. Can't run out a bit. All right, here we go. Yeah, you can see this is an example of a paint that's been thin too much. Look how wet that is. It's like mostly thinner right there. Yeah. So I'm actually what I'm doing right now is I'm just running air over this to just dry it quickly. And if you guys pick a certain angle to see it, it's gone now. Anyways, here we go. Okay, and then the other one. I'm trying to get down to the bottom where it's going to be a bit less thin. There we go. So that's building up. It's very, really, like, I don't know, it's so satisfying to see it happen, you know? Right? <laughs> I love it. Normally, I normally, you guys probably have noticed that I'm keeping the color to the panels, but I kind of feel like doing one here as well. I like it. I'm into it. Yeah, it's very orky. Yeah, up here we did them all orange, which is fine. We'll stick with our guns. I'd say I had like half a plane on the, on the color coding here. This looks amazing. Thank y'all. Does that... <laughs> <laughs> audience, does this help? Does this make you? <laughs> <laughs> it's not really something you need to zoom in on, but it's, oh, it looks so good. I think one of my favorite things, honestly, about the way um, you do these buildings, Adrian, mm. is that, um, <clears throat> and I'm, there's going to be some cleanup involved because uh, I have a little bit of splatter. I was bragging about my Sotar, and then it's uh, <laughs> it's not quite yeah. cutting it with the... Well, I just I just gave you my, my paints, to, paints to clog it up, so... Yeah, um... <laughs> Uh, I I like the way, like, you, uh, I mean, again, it's like we talk about these things and we say, yeah, am I doing this because I'm lazy or am right. I doing what? But I love the way you include black in this, right? Like, right. just like, it, the buildings are mostly black. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I'm not really painting everything. No. Um, because basically I just primed it <laughs> and now I'm just doing. It's just that, Yeah. yeah. And you can just like use the weathering and stuff like that. So it, you know, use it to your advantage. Uh, this is a great question. Nick, Nick Allen, Nicholas Allen asks, 
He says, hey, tight ends, uh, what's a movie you love to quote in your daily life? <laughs> I'm fond of Fifth Element, mm -hmm. uh, from the Fifth Element. Uh, negative, I'm a meat popsicle. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe popsicle. prompted by our, um, reminded him, maybe you are... The ghost night, popsicles. Night haunts. Uh, <laughs> ogres eating night haunts. Uh, I love it. I don't know. What, what do you What do you think? Do you have one, Adrian? I have a lot of movies. I think I'm mostly just movie quotes. Um, and I'd, if I didn't have that, I would just like not exist. Um, I think a one that I quote a lot, and a lot of people don't get it, is um, Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> okay. Like, just have you seen that movie? I for it's been forever. It is a it's a cool classic. Megan yeah. Megan loves Big. It's Trouble all in the China. reflexes, you know. Gotta listen to old Jack Burton. Uh, I quote that a lot. I quote Three Amigos a lot. <laughs> the old oh, Three Amigos. Steve yeah, movie. yeah. <laughs> Not that old. Oh my God, you like you like some old movies. I like old movies. Yeah. Know. That's the stuff I grew up on, though, so it was very formative, you know? Like, yeah, you have, you have a lot of older siblings, right? I'm the oldest. Oh, well, you, I guess your dad just <laughs> made you watch it then. Interesting. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, I don't know. Uh, I don't say it a lot, but I, I really enjoy in the new Mad Max when the main bad guy's like mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that's like such like a great response to someone. Right. Like it, it's like almost it's the harsh. worst. It's yeah, just like yeah. the worst response. It's yeah. like, it's like, like not bad, but you yeah, just... I almost want some kind of like <laughs> something, right? Like yeah. mediocre. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> it is the worst, actually. It's the worst here. Um. So I like that. Oh, man, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I. I, I don't think I quote movies. No, you might very you know, often quote Vegeta every once in a while. Vegeta. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I, I will tell you something that my my wife and I love doing. Um, it's come up on the on the stream before that uh, I grew up in a kind of an Italian American family, sure. and there's this thing that <laughs> that The Sopranos does that's really common. Where um, it's it's basically like a stand-in for like hey let's show bad parenting, mm -hmm. but like if you guys have seen The Sopranos, uh, like the kid Anthony or like the Meadow will like say like some curse word or say something, and like Tony's response like all these Italian American like like older guys their responses go oh hey like <laughs> yeah. they don't actually parent it <laughs> right um, so Megan and I like to do that a lot like if someone says like if I'm like walking down the hallway and Megan says something like I can't believe that person did right. this blah 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 and like calls them a name or something i'll just be like oh hey. like, just like <laughs> not a response like not actually being like hey don't say it's not say appropriate it. yeah. but like but i grew up with that certainly like like right. uh not my dad but like uh my mom or like aunts and uncles <laughs> like the response to something that they probably should so step address. in and say a little yeah. bit more to they're like oh hey. <laughs> like maybe slap you in the back of the head yeah, um, you're so like, yeah that's a, that's i do i, I do happening. love that um from that's the sopranos so i do, do I, I do that a lot that's amazing <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Too. Um, so, yeah. It's like one of those things where it's like I, uh, it's a combination of the fact that like I, I kind of grew up with it, plus then a show like right. showed me that like it, like it's a thing. Oh, that's and like, like a real that's thing. Right, it is a thing, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> the the gabagool thing from The Sopranos is not a thing in the Italians where I grew up. Yeah. I guess it's more of a North Jersey thing. Right. Uh, wasn't wasn't a Baltimore. Uh, Italian American thing. Mm. So that I was like, what are they talking about? Right. Very regional. Like, cannot be cannot be a real word. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Uh, thank right. you, thank you, Nick, for that Thanks, question. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things like the moment someone asks you that question, you're just like, I've literally forgotten every movie I've ever seen. Like I don't what's what's yeah, television? I don't know. Yeah, you like you sort of like, you, just, you sort of freeze up. Yeah. <laughs> So I did another layer of cleanup with black, as we do. And uh, I feel like, again, if you guys saw last week's episode, there's a lot of the same techniques here. So I, I, I promise, every, not every time I come on to the show am I going to show you the same exact combination of colors, but this really is literally to match that army. So uh, well, I'm not going to apologize. Yeah, I just well, did. I, I mean, frankly, we, we, we like that. Um, yeah. Brent, Brent and I talk about that a lot. Come back to um, concept. Yeah, even like the next week, we're uh, very happy to do that. Um, I, you know, that's how uh, that's how a lot of teaching was done in the ancient world, right? Um, which isn't necessarily like the best, uh, you know, like like oh my god, <laughs> teachers in the ancient world so great. Um, but the the point is like the, the repetition thing is like really strong. It's yeah. like really important. 
So um, I'm into it. Showing it in new ways, showing it on new things, and just being like, "Yep, we did this before. Remember when we did this before? Right. Here it is again." That's still um, applicable. Yeah, no, that's a good point. What I'm yeah. doing now is I'm just going to go. Hit, I'm hitting up all the black with the gray, um, which yes, you guessed it, it's going to get a blue wash before we do stencil work. And if you guys haven't seen last week's episode, guess I'm go check it out. We painted uh, these snaggas. It was a lot of fun, and I'm in love with those models. Yeah. Um, it, it was fun. It was cool to see. It was cool to see your your blue and orange process, especially yeah. your orange process, right? Uh, people Very different asked, than yours. People have asked. Well, I don't do mine. Mine is just always going to be like a mu much darker than yours. But yeah, I've never done it for like a model or for units, right? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I would. I, I think I would learn from you and use yours if I did models. Hmm. Um, for terrain, the the doing. I, also, like I showed you some of the oranges I was using. Right. They were darker. They're definitely darker. They're darker. They're more like an umber, like a burnt umber. Then then I work up, and then I, I highlight with yellow. Yeah. Um, and that that seems to work okay for terrain, but I'm, I I think it would be less good for for actual models. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. I I liked it a lot though. Like when we have some of that stuff around. I was super loving it. Well, Adrian, we'll finish two of these on the stream at least, uh, and we can finish the rest of these tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. But because those are pretty close, huh? These are these are very close. So I'm just hitting it up with some brown, not too much, and this is not the brown I normally use for the uh, weathering to match that board. Uh, okay. Just a bit of a khaki. Just, there you go. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Just moving sorry. that awkward spot just a again, little. just a little khaki. This looks amazing. And, uh, it's pretty much ready for washes. I'm just gonna, honestly, I needed to sit for a little bit and get somewhere close to curing. So, with uh, some of the overspray I have going on here, which I wasn't supposed to, we just yep. have to clean that up with black. <laughs> Is that what you do? No, yeah, that's fine. Okay. I thought you didn't need that with Sotar. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> it's, I think I'm really, um, Missing my toothbrush here, which is such a lame excuse. <laughs> my toothbrush, I can't paint without I my know, toothbrush. I <laughs> know, like really, like I, honestly, I would not, uh, I would not normally leave home without it. I don't know what happened. Was well, uh, it this morning? <laughs> yeah, I used the same one. <laughs> oh my gosh, can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be amazing. It was like you got a little, little chunk of uh, little moot green in your. <laughs> I'd be, I think I'd be a goner by yeah, now. Probably. Yeah. I do hear Brett say, uh, "I'm Batman" all the time. <laughs> Basically, like every five seconds, that's what he's saying. Bat Brett? Yeah. I'm Batman. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever heard Brett say that. <laughs> well, he says it's one of his most famous quotes. All right. So, what's left on these guys? Mm, washes and. So, it's the usual thing where there's like different layers of, of, of washes and stencil and wash on top of it. So, I'm kind of trying to decide what is, is safe to wash over with. What do you mean? Like, I don't want to strip the paint if it's not cured enough. I also oh, wanna, I see. I also want to apply a stencil, which could also strip the paint. Right, 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 right. Um, Sorry, I, I misunderstood that. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> We're going to wash the metal, the pure metal, because it's not going to get any stencil work on top of it. So. First thing you want to do with these is uh, it's important that you start with a black wash. I'm going to use a null oil wash here. Um, and the reason for that is because you want to kind of create the sense that this is, uh, again, this, this isn't a, like a bright silver metal. It's like a worn down metal. It's kind of grainy. And then on top of that, we want to add the, 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 uh, the dirt. Uh, it sounds like that should just be a semantic question. That actually doesn't matter the way I actually paint it, but it does. If you do a brown wash and then a black on top of that, it's going to look very different than starting with this black yes. and then doing the brown. Yes. So it's an important step here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab my Nuln Oil. And I'm going to add just a little bit of water, not too much, because as I mentioned, if you're using water to thin your paints, you have to be very, very careful because it can mess with the pooling. And uh, almost worse than that, in this case, uh, it can end up leaving like a grayish white residue um, as it's just like thins too far so it's basically just dirty water and that's like the worst thing you can do. Um, and we're going to be really just totally awful with this and it's just looking like super disgusting and, and, and perfect so that's what we're doing. We're just going over the whole thing like this. 
And speaking of saying things over and over again, this is one of those techniques that we're like always talking about mm -hmm. that um, not a skill technique. No. Right? We don't like no. think of this as a technique like, oh man, I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm especially note. good at slathering wash all over <laughs> yeah. something. I mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> But it is a technique that you get a lot of mileage from. Right? Yes, exactly. So not Adrian, did you way. use black or did you use, uh, did you end up using the primer? Uh, I did use black for the second layer. It's this yeah. guy right here? It is, yeah. Okay. So I, I, I'll do a little cleanup for you. Oh, right thank you. Hopefully it doesn't clog. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> I feel bad because they're my paints. No, it's a, it, you know, it's like crazy, but like, this is why people have so many weird different opinions and thoughts on paints. Yes. And you're like, someone says something like, whoa, you don't do this? And you're like, <laughs> no, I don't do that. And you're like, yeah. like uh, you know, I was kind of saying this the other day. Um, I was saying like, uh, I can't remember what it was, but one of, one of you guys, whether it's Brad or somebody was like pointing this out. And I was like, look, uh, it's, it's so funny that we all do this to each other because like we all, we all see each other's output. Right, right, right. Like right. clearly there's output. <laughs> yeah. Clearly output is... Is adequate <laughs> right. for for what we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why are we getting on? E why do we get on each other for like the way we do things differently? Like right. I always think about this. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you guys, I, I've I've painted some armies. I painted some terrain. Um, Adrian's painting plenty of armies, but we still all and okay. everybody does this. We do this to our friend groups, right? We're yeah. like, <laughs> we're like the the guy who's like the best painter in your group. Yeah. You find out he does something a way different than you do. Yeah. Like, well, why do you do that? Why you, what? Whoa, what's wrong like, with whoa, you? have you ever tried this? Yeah. It's like, guys, look look at look at his army. It's clearly working. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> what, what is wrong with you? Calm down. So funny. Because um, well, like, so much of this is like. We have all these like learned ex uh, experiences, um, or these experiences where we've like learned something, and with this, this is just how I've done it. This is how you don't always remember necessarily when you learned it or how you learned it or the five sources that I taught you it, but you're just like, this is how I do it, and it's not that often that you actually like get to see how someone else does it, right? And then it kind of makes you like, so your first reaction is like, oh, they they're totally wrong. That's not, that's not the way it's done. And it's right. Like, what is the way exactly. it's done? You know? Exactly. It's so funny. Um, what's really driving me nuts right now is that thing where I forgot one slab oh, no. of corrugated metal on the wall. That's I'll brutal. See the top right up there? Huh? Right up here. Oh, yeah. Can't unsee that. Yeah. Once, you, once, that's, once that happens, it's just like... You're done. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. Uh, but I will say, um, still no toothbrush, of course, but... <laughs> Uh, the black, the black through my badger is is going is is amazing. Excellent. And I have th I've used this combo before. I have used the Vallejo Model Air with a badger. I did not thin it. Um, this is actually yeah. I've done orange this way, purple. Um, that black board, you know, like the obsidian board we have. Yeah. That was painted on six. That was painted with a lot of uh, Model Air and Game Air. Mm, actually, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. All righty, so we're almost there. I am gonna do a little stencil for you guys. Uh, it's gonna be right here. Um, That's good, because we need more videos for our stencil reveal. This is true. This is what I'm working on, yeah. Okay. Now one thing I will say, I don't, I kind of know the plans Adrian has for the stuff that I'm cleaning up. Um, and I guess I don't really have to clean up the panels here so much because you're going to be painting them white and stuff. It's going to get more, yeah. More. And then now it's going to get cleaned up again. No, that's a metallic can be not great to leave under things. Yeah. Um, but what I will say is uh, my black overspray onto the metal, mm -hmm. a significantly better look yes, 100%. Than, than the silver overspray on the black, yes. right? The silver overspray on the black um, and this is something like you guys will learn uh, whenever you're working with, like, you, you you always have to learn this sometimes. Right, you do. Every project. Yep, yep. So, you know, you, you'll, you will start to internalize certain combinations, but if you want to leave something black, it's better to, you know, have that be the cleanup color and let mm -hmm. the black get a little bit on the silver. Right. It actually looks good. Yeah, it's like a, it's a fade at that it, point, it, It's right? a fade and, and not like a, not like an air, not like an no, like no, obvious no. airbrush fade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, it looks like a good fade. Um, so, again, something I kind of just learned when I started doing this, I was like, oh, this is like, this seems to be going way better. Now, right. uh, I was having a little trouble with the, uh, with the game air through my Sotar and stuff, but, 
this combo of airbrush and uh, paint is working out a lot better for me. But still, like, so much nicer to overspray black onto silver than it is the other way around. Totally agree. I'm not doing that. Oh, now you got it. <laughs> now you got it. So this is, uh, I don't know what I made this stencil for, but these connections are way too small. So it's like ripping itself apart. Um, but you know what? These are orcs. We're here for this. Yeah, I think that's gonna. I think it's gonna look good. <laughs> uh, all right. So here we go. Fine, fine. We're gonna we're gonna pick a point, sort of anchor it to, and yeah. You know, I don't know why orcs would paint checkers, which is like the hardest thing to paint. So that you know that that was already. Kind of taking me out of it. I just don't. It's not very believable. But they me. do. That's not a you think, Oops. right? That's uh, yeah. that's established in in canon, right? Is exactly. that is no, that no. Goths? Wait, goths are mo are like the biggest about checkers, and this is very much like where the goth influence is for me because I, I mentioned my my three favorite clans uh, are the goths, the death skulls, and the free Buddhas. My three favorite clans. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Oh my gosh. You can have three favorites. That's fine. Uh, and so there's like things I like from each of them that I kind of borrowed from. All right, so we've got that. We're gonna grab some of this bone white. See that? When that kid asked me if I like grapes, I have an answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just like uh, you don't have I, favorites. I, I, that's where I, that's where I froze up and could not like come up with a good example. <laughs> I've definitely been asked weird questions from kindergartners before. Um, when my wife and I were like long term subbing, ready out, getting out of school, yeah. it was like the recession, it was, it was like a good gig. Sure. Um, it, it, it was like we, both of us, like hardcore pass on kindergarten. Like they come mm -hmm. up in the morning for anyone who's ever substitute taught. Yeah. You kind of get like this list of gigs you can, you can go in for. Totally. In kindergarten, we're like, nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> First, second grade, nope. I will Third start. grade, you can start. Kindergarten, just kind of like, ooh, that's rough. <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, the, the, another big thing is like they like it, it's similar to the macaroni and cheese thing, right? <laughs> uh, they expect things to be done a certain way because that's what kids are used to. Yeah, yeah. So like, if you do anything slightly different, which you know, of course you will. Right. Uh, they're like, wait, no, this is how you do it, <laughs> and you're like, this uh, is how you apply a wash. <laughs> right, 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 right. Exactly. It's all coming together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's I don't know. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> I'm excited for this stencil review. Thank you. But yes, Keith, we should be painting Cosmo Sons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. It's, uh, it's coming. Brett is still giving us quotes, by the way. He's just, he's like the Sorcerer's Apprentice, but for, um, <laughs> but for movie quotes. Which is crazy, because like, there's a thing notoriously where Brett has seen very few movies. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brett, Brett, like he's googling them right now. <laughs> yeah, he's Goog he. Brett's googling movies. <laughs> hey, uh, let's no. see movies. <laughs> if there's like one guy who's not gonna know a pop culture reference, it's Brett. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, Vegeta. All right. Yeah, no, that's true. I didn't know that one. I didn't know that one. <laughs> Uh, Megan says, uh, I did preschool once and I wanted to die. Yeah. Yeah. Pre now, preschool, that's tough. My mom does um, uh, childcare. Um, she used to do just teaching, but then uh, she also she mostly does the childcare part of it now. And it's, you know, right up until basically like preschool or kindergarten. And that is a tough crowd as well, let me tell you that. So it's impressive work. I think we're ready for this. It's, uh, it's going to. It's gonna be fine. Let's get a close up on this of uh, reveal for I'm our do shoulder, compilation. Shoulder zoom. All right, here we go. Now, just to be clear, this is gonna destroy the stencil. I'm not getting the stencil back, and that's okay. But so. but that's that is okay because you have a thing that that does it. I right? just make them. Yeah. Like this will this will print off the same one. In that's the a big there. reason to do yeah, this. It's like dirt cheap. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are we? Are we is it in the reveal? Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's looking good. Yeah. This will be, uh, uh, we'll speed this up in the compilation. <laughs> okay, lie, that's gonna shake. Uh huh. Oh, very uh, nice. Now you're gonna. Now you're doing them one at a time. One at a time, because they're li literally not attached anymore. Uh, uh, uh huh. 
I'm good. Is this gonna make it into the compilation, Zach? Yeah, this one is gonna, like, we're gonna be, like, cruising through them all real fast, and we're gonna get to this one and just sit here and watch it. Nice and slow. Beautiful. All right, now we gotta... gotta be real careful. Yeah, this would literally scratch off the paint. But this is a pro move here. Pro move. You gotta you got use this thing. You gotta use the blade to get a few of these. Yeah, they're just so stuck in there. Tiny stencils are rough. They're, t they're tough. And to the, to the point of them being super stuck in there, if they weren't super stuck in there, you get that um, rattle can look, right? It yeah. looks like they literally were made using a giant stencil. And like, we got some fades in there, but that's all intentional, that's all good. There it is, ha ha! It's a little, little crooked. That looks great. But not bad for orc painting. And then this is where we will do one more black around here to kind of just blend it in, and we're good, we're ready for a final wash. Nice, okay. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna, uh, I'm at the point where these guys, I think the metallic, oh, I have to hit this one more, is done. So then what I would do next is, mm -hmm. on my guys, I would just now do these white. Is that right? That's correct. I've yeah. got it. It's this, got this dead white here. And I probably, you guys, won't finish mine here today during the stream. Yeah, you're kind uh, of just doing the rest in bulk, but which will be... we'll probably knock them like out. actual work for me here. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably knock them out um, tomorrow morning. Yeah, exactly. Tomorrow I'm going to come in. We're going to practice some AOS. Yeah. And at any other waking moment, we're going to be working on Thousand Suns. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited too. You know, um, it's, I'm excited to have uh, th them as an army. I, I have them as an army in Heresy. That's right. Um, and they, they were a lot of fun. I'm, I'm, even though my, my first army and kind of my first, my first love in 40K was Tau, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I do love magic and sorcerers and stuff like that really typically that. in these. So, um, I, and I also love a good tragic character. I think the Thousand Sons are really good tragic. They the, are. The, the tragic story of 40K probably. Yeah, right? absolutely. Um, and, and yeah, I don't, I don't think it's. I don't think anyone is more of a tragic story than them. So uh, I'm excited. They're really great. They're yeah, they're great characters. And Magnus is a great character. And honestly, uh, I'm honest. So Iron's cool too. We will have the Wizzy War between Zach and John. Uh, All right. Once everything's ready. Yeah. Once 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 my army's fully painted up. Um, hopefully Thousand Suns hype will at that point be like in the stage. Hopefully they're good. <laughs> okay, now we can put Zach on. <laughs> well, no, but you know, like, right, like, what, when we're talking about like, what's a good matchup, like, right, right. We, can, we can endlessly get people excited about Jukari and Admech. Of course, Whether of it's course. like, so I think a lot of people, it's like outrage, <laughs> yeah, especially yeah, yeah. with Admech. It gets the people um, going, you know? But, but when, but, you know, there are some armies that people just like. Yeah, totally. Uh, like people Tyranids. just like orcs. People just and like orcs. Tyranids. Yeah. When these armies are doing well, we can show them and people will just love it. Like, yeah, they're, they're like always... we just did a, a week of orcs and it was totally fine. Right. People love it. Um, yeah. We could but, not do that for some armies. Yeah, there are a lot of armies that are just like... Hey, it's night week. Ah. Yeah, the, some You're armies... And some armies people... Like Tau, even Tau is a little iffy. Because yeah. a lot of people love Tau, but a lot of people hate Tau. Right. So you can kind of do that with Tau, but eh, maybe not as much. <laughs> you can, but people don't think that you can. And they'll be outraged because of those people that think that you can. The, there's a lot of bad... People have a lot of bad taste in their mouth from a lot of the Eldar armies, a lot of Tau, <laughs> a lot of the Space Marine factions, yeah. right? A lot of those armies put a bad taste in people's yeah. mouths. Because like... In the past 10 years, those three factions I just named right there, mm -hmm. right? Tau, Space yeah. Marines overall, yeah. and Eldar yeah. overall, yeah. have more often than not been like, somebody in there yeah. can ruin your day. Oh, absolutely. Right? So like, yeah. and by somebody in there, I mean maybe it's Yunari, yep. maybe it's Tau at this particular build, mm -hmm. maybe it's Trip this time. particular chapter, right, right? Maybe it's this particular chapter of Space Marines. You know, you show up you, you show up in 8th Ed and someone's got Ultra Marines, you're not really worried about it, right? right? You show up and they had, what, Raven Guard? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. at some points in the oh, yeah. it's like in a nightmare, right? Exactly, exactly. So um, everyone kind of has bad taste in their mouth in these armies. Mm -hmm. That's not the case no. with orcs, Tyranids, <laughs> Chaos Space Marines of any type, I think. Um, most types, yeah, you're no, good. No, no, nobody's like, oh, I can't, oh, they're bringing, yeah. they're bringing uh, Chaos uh, Space berserkers. Ah. Oh, like, <laughs> people just want to see him do well. Yeah. People are like, oh, like, hey, he oh, killed the guy. Yeah, he got beat by <laughs> corn demons, like, yes. <laughs> It's so, so um, I think Thousand Suns are people love Thousand Suns, right? Yeah, like the, their cool. story is so cool. I mean, yeah. they truly have probably 
I think you'd have to say one of the just the richest storylines of any yeah. faction in 40k. Well, because they're not just like again, they're not um, they're not Saturday morning villains. They're not just like oh yeah, we're so evil and take over the world mm, and like gonna do like weird stuff that nobody cares about. It's like oh they were betrayed and now they have all these plans and like they're trying to you know make their way in the world and yeah, like yeah they're not good guys but they're not bad guys and it's just like it's good care. It's about characters. It's not about like. Yeah, no, guys, no kidding. Iron Hands, right? Like, Iron Hands are fine now. Iron but Hands. I, again, like, that's my point. Like, uh, among all the Space Marines, people yeah. have... Yeah. Th- th- there are very few chapters well, yeah. that weren't having at some point. Like, maybe your your favorite, right? Imperial Fist yes. or one of your favorite. There, like, was a, there was a hot minute where it was like, maybe the Imperial Fist... Oh, the Bolter crazy stuff, right? Like, I did very well with my fists, but um, it wasn't, like, a super common thing. Now, when you put the white on, any, anything I need to know in particular... Um, be pretty bright with it towards the center, at least. Um, we want it to get, we just want that bright look, that's all. Got it. Uh, I'm just applying a brown wash over everything. We let the, the, the black uh, dry or mostly dry. Now we're just going to go ahead and do a brown wash. It's going to make it, give it that extra level of grime and nastiness. And I'm kind of keeping an eye on the pooling. Some pooling is good, but if, if it like really looks like paint, that's where you want to step in there. If it looks like a pool of dirt, that's fine. Um, we're going to shoulder zoom you, Adrian. Shoulder zoom me. So you can see here, I'm kind of going back over these, making sure. Um, once these dry, which we won't, they won't be dry today, but what I would recommend is, you can see here as I kind of tilt it, we're getting uh, a bit of an unevenness here. And you can, of course, apply a, a matte varnish with an airbrush, um, preferably. And it'll go ahead and even out these kind of any, any splotches that you might get. Now, you can, of course, do additional washes to also help kind of even it out. That works as well. Um, so just kind of consider what, what you're more comfortable with. Um, so that is that. You know what I wish? And something, really nasty. something That looks great. Something no, it looks amazing. <laughs> something else I, I to speaking of learning, I wish I had wait, waited to clean up black <laughs> until after I had also done white. Because <laughs> no. now I just have to clean up the same areas again. Less so. It's, it's, it's a um, little better. <laughs> That's yeah, okay. You just you apply paint so thickly. Well, the, am I the, doing the thing? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, this, the, that's sort of what the the Patriot kind of does. That um, <laughs> the Patriot going to apply that you, paint you, everywhere. Yeah, the the Patriot sort of does that. I, I pretty much just like pull back and go crazy on it. Yeah. Um, mostly the the Sotar is the one that's a little better at not doing that. Right. Yeah, I get, it's funny because like I said, like I I've only worked with the Iwata, so it's for better or worse. It's like. I know I have the same kind of output. So here, look, I can I cannot do that, right? Oh, this so, is, uh, so just being lazy. So this is like, <laughs> well, it's funny because lots of with terrain, typically I'm just like, up oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. The cleanup's gonna be fine. There's a lot of layers um, of black. With with like when I was doing the ogre skin. Uh, that's 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 not an option, right? With like a, no. like like skin, and, yeah. but like I can be I can try. Here we go. Real try. careful, just nice and easy. That's great. You're um, great. I will say sometimes on the stream, uh, he's he's probably still in the audience, but Brett is like really good at applying airbrush paint very carefully. Yeah. And like he'll be painting like the concrete thing. Yeah. And like. I, I, I think he's aware of it. Like I, I've gone through like four of them, and we look right. over, and he's doing one. Yeah. And it's because I apply paint like this. I'm just like, okay, yep, just, so just blast it out, just like. <laughs> um, but yeah, typically, I, I, it's actually a feat. In my opinion, it's actually a feature of the Badger uh, Patriot is that it can pretty much be used as a rattle can. Right. Because sometimes you just need a rattle can. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Especially for terrain, right? What's that? Especially for terrain. For terrain, for primer. I mean, like you, you were pointing out how like I, I apply prime, but like. It, it dries fine, right? Like, it uh, it doesn't dry all gross up, like, like goopy and stuff, exactly. right? Yeah, that's like, true. So, like, you, you saw, like, the guys all saw that I, I had primed. I forget what it was. Uh, it was, like, models. It was, like, my ogre models. And they, oh, and yeah. they came they in, were and all they, they looked, like, all wet and black. Like, um, and I was like, no, they, it's going to dry flat. It's going to be fine. <laughs> uh, and it was, right? Like, um, but the, the idea is you just, like, get... Get stuff out, you right. know, just go in and blast it. The moment I see any any wetness from a airbrush, I like stop. I'm like, that was too thick. I need to like calm down. Oh sure, on on a uh, like a model, right? Yeah, those were models, <laughs> but that's primary. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just interesting. Like you said, like, once again, they turn out great. Like, yeah, right? So really they matter. turn... I mean, like... <laughs> what are you saying, Asian? Get out of here. <laughs> and look, could they be better? They could absolutely be better. Like, I've got a lot to Always. learn. But that's not going to do it. Like, no one's going to say, like, you know what? Like, no one would look at those. Like, if I took those to be judged yeah, yeah, yeah. like by, like, a Golden Demon winner, he wouldn't be like, hey, look, these could have been great, but you just put the... You just put your Vallejo surface primer on, just like a little too thick. <laughs> I can tell. That's what. That's the problem. Yeah. No one's gonna say that. They're if gonna I was judge. I would say that. <laughs> they're gonna say. Oh, no. <laughs> they're gonna say like. It's actually you, me. You, I mean, like it, you, you rushed them, or like you, you, sh you just take more time with them, take more time in detail work, or whatever, right? right? Like no one's gonna go. Oh, those would have been perfect if you hadn't put on your <laughs> your your spray airbrush primer so thick. <laughs> Yeah, um, I agree, McDermott. Yeah, yeah like the the, um, the the Patriot is amazing for um, it can do finer detail. I, I paint a lot of the ogres with this, a lot of their skin. Yeah, um, but it, it can also just suddenly, basically, now you got me like, see, like now I'm doing it like this. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Look, I will say this. I will say this. <clears throat> yeah, you're gonna have to do a black again no matter what. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, do, do with that what you will. I am going to move on to the next step over here, which is, uh, now normally I would let this dry, but I'm kind of just just kind of going for it. Cool, um, that looks good. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It, this is um, scratches, metal, uh, different kind of metal wear and tear, right? We have this, these uh, kind of uh, planks of metal, and we have the paint applied to them, and obviously, like, they're in a scrap yard, they're not going to be perfectly painted. We have the black, which is could be like burn or whatever, um, but they're also going to kind of paint's going to be coming off. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go ahead. Yes, I'm not thinning it. This is fine. It's just on on this terrain here, um, and I'm going to get some some paint, and we're going to do some kind of edge highlights like so, where I'm just kind of going along the edge of it, getting a bit of the silver, and then apply some scratches. I'm using a pretty big brush, which is okay, and kind of make sure. Sorry, my head. My head! So we're kind of alternating between doing some edge highlighting whenever an angle presents itself, and then we can do a bit of kind of sharp scratches like so. And this is really gonna give it that really, s oops. <laughs> give it a scuffed that's okay. up look. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, one, that's probably gonna like not even be noticeable if we don't glue it, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. And then we can always glue it. Exactly. Um, now this, I will say, this is Kind of again my style where I do like it a little bit stylized. You can of course do like chipping paints and stuff like that, but this is for me the look I like, at the speed I like, and uh, I think it turns out okay. McDermott, I'm not sure I would agree with you that the um, that the badger is not great for doing clean transitions. Um, I think I think it can. Um, I, you, I think you'd be able to find some some painters way better than me who've used it to do it, but even um, it's still on Titans. Not Hobby Titans on Tabletop Titans, but the video where uh, I painted the Cobra, my Suryani, uh not Cobra, Hornet. excuse me, um, Hornets. Yeah. Um, I, I use my Badger for that to do to do tra color transitions oh, um, sure. and stencil work and all kinds of stuff. Um, we actually um, are working on, by the way, so you guys know, um, <clears throat> moving those videos from uh, Tabletop Titans to Hobby Titans, yep. where they make a little more sense to live. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and you say working on them, how hard can it be? <laughs> it's it's not really, actually. It's just that like weirdly the thumbnails are gone, so we just have to like get new thumbnails and upload new thumbnails, and right. it's, it's not a big deal. But <laughs> you know, there's a lot going on. There's like an army a week here, and by an army a week, I mean a new army is painted a week here right now. <laughs> We're basically a paint studio. Now. We almost are. We're almost like a paint studio for ourselves. Yeah. Well, that was. <laughs> That I mean, was like the impetus behind a lot of the things. It was like, you know, yeah, it was that. <clears throat> Not sure how it's painting out, but we're having a good time. <laughs> I, I think it. I think it improves everything yeah. for, for us to be. I mean, like, like, look, look. We have an amazing Necron army painted by Israel. Yeah. We have amazing armies painted by Colin Ward. Oh, like. um, uh, other people I'm less familiar with specifically, but sure. I see their work and it looks Brian amazing. Bowling. Yeah. Uh, or who, the, who's the Tyranid? Yeah, Brian's armies look great. Um, who's the Tyranid army from? Uh, I feel bad. I, I don't know the, the name of the studio. Um, it, lo it looks incredible. It look good. Uh, and w w that's probably something that's going to, I I don't know, I guess keep happening. But Yeah, we're getting, we're we getting have, more nids from them. We have good painters here, right? And so, yeah. like, it looks, it's it's really special when it's, like, 
who painted this army? Oh, the guys, oh, the guys on the stream painted right. the army, right? That also means, like, again, <coughs> we are constantly trying to keep up with the releases, and so for us to be able to be like, hey, we're getting uh, Castell and Crow. Let's do that. We know how to do that. You know, right. Well, that, that that's the thing, though, right, Adrian? Like, right now we're doing two things that are particularly bad. One, <laughs> Thousand Suns. Yeah. Because we don't actually have that army. Yeah. Right, and that's rare. Yeah, actually, right. That's uh, yeah. But then two, we're also like trying to by the end of the year, it seems like have almost every Age of Sigmar army imaginable. Mm. Everyone went crazy about Age of Sigmar here. Yeah, like so, everyone has like three armies that are working on Age of Sigmar. <laughs> right. So like out of nowhere, entire armies are happening. Like yeah. to your point, totally. really, what 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 new models is GW releasing right now? Well, they're doing what we all want them to do, and they're just cranking out codexes. Yeah. yeah. As far as models, it's like Castle and Crow. Yeah, yeah. Well, like if we had to paint him up. Oh yeah, if it was just that. That'd be easy. We'd be, yeah, piece of cake. We, we wouldn't even be talking yeah, about it. If it's Wednesday night, we yeah. wouldn't even talk about who's doing it yet. Right. We yeah, had yeah. that conversation <laughs> like tomorrow. Hey, yeah. you want to paint a crow real quick? Like, um, <laughs> so true. Very different than like a whole army or like a whole army right after you just did a whole Age of Sigma army. <laughs> Plus, we're always doing terrain. We're adding orc terrain. Right. Uh, we did just finish a terrain board. Mm. Um, right, the the Taiga board. That's we're, right. we're updating the Taiga board, yeah. and we have new boards also board. happening. So, yeah. like, that's kind of what it is. That I, I feel like. Um, oh, you know what I missed? Oh, gosh, I always miss them. I missed the ones on the ground. Get the ones on the ground. <laughs> Sometimes you just like look at things a particular way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna flip here. and See okay. what Adrian's up to. Yeah, I'm just going after panels. This is one of my favorite things to paint of all time. It's just. Uh, Metal scratched paint, like that kind of weathering. I just, I could do this all day, honestly. Uh, which is a good thing because that paint works. So I do that. But uh, it's just so rewarding. Like you just find a little kind of angle and you work on it a bit and you don't have to stress about it too. It's just like scratches, you know? And it all just looks amazing. Thank you, Cobra Commander, as always. Thank you so much, Cobra. Hey. Hello, Titans. He says, I'm loving these buildings. We wants it the precious. <laughs> Guys, I don't do I like creepy voices. Boy. I am. I, I'm not I, creepy. That's mean. Gollum? Yeah. He, he's creepy. Don't call him creepy. Oh. He, oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Go, go. <laughs> but, oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I, I love. Uh, <laughs> I love having to reconsider how we how we uh, characterize him. How we characterize Gollum. No, <laughs> uh, it's so fun because you're so like aware of these things, and you're always like worried about saying something bad. <laughs> sure, but then you know just enough to be like upset about it, even if you're fine. Right, right. I'm right. not saying you're actually thinking about Gollum, but you know, <laughs> there's other instances. No, I hate Gollum. I hate the character. I mean, he's great. He's amazing, but like, yeah. I think you're supposed to hate him, kind of. Right? Yeah, it's one of those characters where just like, yeah, the whole point is. To kind of hate him uh, until you learn about him. You know what I am? Uh, you know one of the saddest parts about? I mean, he, he's going to be back, and actually, this is pretty good timing. Probably by the time uh, Brian's going to be back and forth, but arguably by by the time that's happening more regularly, uh, you know, we had he is into the Lord of the Rings game. Oh yeah. And I had actually made I had actually started to get some of it as well <laughs> because there is a box set. The most recent box set has like the two factions I'm into. Oh really? Um, which is in the good guy factions, which are the Rohan riders and the, the uh, undead guys, right? Oh. And that was like cool. the box was like those guys, right? Right. Plus a bunch of orcs. Uh -huh. um, so I like literally picked that up. Uh, and had chatted a bit about with with Brian a bit about it. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, I would love to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, I love it. They're so like uh, you know like we, we're always like we need to paint it. This is like this is like their warning. We need to actually just like get ahead of Lord of the Rings. Like it's gonna <laughs> have a hot moment at some point. There's a show coming out, right? That's true. Um, it's gonna have a hot moment, <laughs> and we need to not be like. Suddenly, like, everyone yeah. in Titans is painting a Age of Sigmar <laughs> army a week. We're gonna be like, boom! Lord we've got Rings. every yeah. every Lord of the Rings army ready to oh, go. Man, that's a bit of a gamble, don't you think? I think it's a huge gamble. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're not gonna do it. But that is what we should do. If um, I, I don't even know. Yeah, like I, I don't even know why we would do that. <laughs> Other than what I said, like it's just a huge gamble. It's just so fun. I love the movies. Can you, can you imagine just being like, hey guys, 
We painted every Lord of the Rings armor. We know, it's like, not, we know it's not having a moment right now, but we're, we're going to make it have a that's moment. That's the model equivalent of getting into guppies, okay? <laughs> guppies. Great game, great game. <clears throat> Highly recommend people checking it out. Um, I'm almost done here. Oh, great. I, I was going to ask um, what would my next step be, but maybe I, maybe I will... I think here's here's what I think. This yeah. looks so great. I'm gonna zoom in on. Actually, these have kind of reached their natural conclusion. Actually. Oh, let's put them on yeah. the thing. Yeah, they might be a little bit wet still. But uh, there's a little goblin hut. Let's, oh, jeez. It's fine. <laughs> we'll do a little glam cam. Okay. Well, actually, I'm like Zach. I don't make my train be broken. But. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> That's where I draw the line. Okay. Here we go. Put it on. The two already there. Okay, let's take a look. Yay! Yeah. You look great. Thank you. I think what will probably happen tomorrow is I'll do these orange and blue steps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then just be like, okay, Adrian, your turn. Yeah, that would be great, actually. That would be and, and, like, that's that's not, um, that's not like a, oh, we got a little stencil piece there. <laughs> gotta, that's not like a, uh, uh, any kind of, like, I don't feel like doing it or anything. But yeah. honestly, I feel like, it's nice to work as a team, yeah. but there are certain steps, and, and we talked about this when we when we did the armies in a day. Mm. There are certain steps that need to be done by one person, yeah. unless like, you know, I think painting studios, some painting studios work really hard to be able to like replicate yeah. a something like that, right? Yeah, so for to. for us, like um, uh, for the skin on the gargants and my my ogres, mm -hmm. like I did all that, right? Yeah, um, for you know the, how to do it, right? Like what makes these very special is mm. is these the uses of the orange, right? Mm. The building, like we can all do the building, totally, right? We can all do the building, but like I'm not going to do that stencil and this weathering the same way Adrian does it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I'm just not. I, yeah. Even if I try to follow what he's doing, I I, I it won't happen, right? So yeah, I'll do some I'll do some grunt work for you, and be like, there you go. It sounds perfect. There yeah, you go. and then it's easy to crank out. I loved doing those last steps, as I mentioned, and uh, suddenly we'll just have a whole bunch of work terrain. Yeah, you know? I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah. So this has been uh, kind of a, a introduction to work terrain. As we said, it is very easy to do. Um, the building part, we kind of wanted to walk you through the whole thing. You know where you can get some of the materials. Um, I'll also post some more up in the description as well. Um, just some links, links to some of this generic stuff, and uh, super cheap, uh, very fast to build. It's it's durable, um, and I, I think it looks good. It's surprisingly durable, considering that you're using cardboard. Yes, it, it was my big concern. Yeah, right? no, I, I really didn't. When I first made the set, I was like, I don't know if this is gonna hold up. We'll it, try. it doesn't really break. It just like the worst <laughs> thing that happens is it's a little mushed. But yeah, that's not it's that's fine. not the worst, that's right? All good, exactly. Uh, and then of course talked about uh, kind of painting techniques. Um, again, if you haven't seen last week's episode where we did paint up the Beast Nagger Boys, definitely check it out. But this is kind of a different application of how do you take this color scheme, apply it to a piece of terrain. Maybe you guys are looking at actually doing, you know, your own terrain to match your army. Um, and of course, we did not do the weathering uh, from the actual board because now we can use these on anything. These could pop up at any second, um, so keep your eyes out for them. <laughs> You're just gonna table. start tucking them in. The <laughs> yeah, it's like the sword, but it's a whole like orc kind of like fortress. Yeah, like, in the yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, did anyone spot the orc fortress? <laughs> the orange and, and, and Vallejo green blue orc fortress. <laughs> TM. Uh, are we are we good? We did it. I think we done did a thing. Awesome. Yeah. Um, what's what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> uh, we have a lot of stuff happening, of course. Uh, this was sort of our addendum to Orc Week because we still want to talk about it. And I'm sure it'll be back. We definitely have, of course, in the future, more Orc models coming. We, well, have we just painted box. more Orc boards. I we mean, have, yeah, exactly. More, yeah, There's we, so much more coming. Um, so tomorrow is Thursday. And over on our sister channel, Tabletop Titans, Zach and I are going to be playing, as we mentioned, Age of Sigmar. You're going to be playing, I can literally never remember the name of these ogres. Beast Claw. The Beast Claw Raiders. Beast Claw Raiders. I'm going to be playing the Night Hot, third edition, Age of Sigmar. It's going to be a ton of fun. Debut of the Beast Claw Raiders on the channel uh, for playing. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow. We're going to make Brett produce Age of Sigmar. He's yeah. going to have no idea what's He's going to learn. <laughs> yeah. He's going to learn. <laughs> Uh, so definitely tune into that. Even if you don't play Age of Sigmar, just fun to watch and, and and hang out and learn a bit about the new editions. Yeah, and you know, I would add to that real quick yeah. that um, we'll probably chat a little bit as we play about like why like comparisons to 40k or like yes. what, what's interesting about it versus 40k um, or along with 40k. And also, again, the Beast Claw Raiders, um, an army that really you can buy two boxes. I bought four boxes, but you could buy two boxes and have like a really good army mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. be literally painting 10 models. They're kind of big, yeah. but 
that that's almost a plus yeah. that they're kind of big, Absolutely. right? They're not like little infantry, so. Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally, totally agree. Uh, and then Saturday, of course, we have the pre-order date for the Grey Knights and the Thousand Suns Brand New Codex. So um, we will, of course, have our, our guest on, Jesse, who's going to be playing the Grey Knights. Mm. I will be playing probably Thousand Suns, or at least something else fighting against them. Bring all your questions about the new book. We should have them in hand, be able to talk about them. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then last of all, next week, here, same time, same spot, we're going to be painting those Thousand Suns. Thousand Suns, yeah. It's going to be really cool. So gonna, that's I, th I think we're going to show uh, how to kind of do... Rubrics. Yeah. Not sure if we're gonna do five or ten. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. And get them like what we say, battle ready. Yeah. Battle ready rubrics. Um, way yeah. easier than you think. Surprise and spoiler alert: our friend, the Bayoki Craftwork pen, will be put to work. <laughs> you probably knew that was coming. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, wow, five marines in, yeah, in, yeah. in the stream. Yeah. Impressive. Awesome. Uh, we did it, yeah. guys. I will always like to remind you: be kind to each other. Be kind to yourself and always be creating. Thank you.